welcome to our nation's capital where it's homecoming on the hilltop a cool but festive day as the georgetown faithful have come out to support their hoyas as they host a lafayette team that still has patriot league title hopes you see the fans out there again georgetown coming out in support to support their team as they look for their first Patriot League victory of the season. High football fans, Jeremy Huber, Emery Hunt, and Mike Niebrick here for this matchup between Georgetown and Lafayette. Emery, let's start off with this homecoming festivities. Obviously, anytime you get to play in a game like this, it's always fun. And it matters because you get a lot of the old alumni to come back and say hello, and the fans are packed in the stands. The food is great. I was able to try that out early at the tailgate. Didn't want to tell you guys because I wanted it all for myself, but that's what homecoming means to me. Yeah, big time stuff, and the Hoyas hoping to get their first Patriot League victory of the season in front of a homecoming crowd. Let's go ahead and bring in our quarterback, Mike, with the quarterback comparison. And these two quarterbacks today, a little different. I know you like one of them on the one side, the Lafayette quarterback. You really think, I think he's of your vein of quarterback play. He really is. It's it's Shane O'Malley on the, on the Lafayette side of things, and this kid is the true definition of a gunslinger. I mean, you see these guys' stats. He's just a freshman, his first year starting. And, and the, the kid's out here throwing for 35 passes per game. I mean, he, the coach is just letting him sling the ball around the, the yard, and it's fun to watch. But on the contrary, he needs to protect the football a little bit more. Right now he has 11 touchdown passes with 12 interceptions. If he can protect that football a little bit better, get that to be a 2-to-1 ratio, look for him to have a big day today. And then he also needs to continue to spread the wealth. In the last eight games, or the first eight games of the season, you know, six receptions or more have caught a pass during a game. So he's having a big-time year for them. And then on the other side, you have Gunther Johnson for Georgetown. He needs to create some explosive plays, whether that be with his arm or with his feet. I need to see him create some more explosive plays to get that Georgetown offense going big thing they also need to do is stay on the field they're only converting at 20 percent on third down they need to stay on the field more give that defense a break and it's also time to step it up this georgetown team is craving a quarterback to step up and take the reins this is what this is his time to step up big time home a homecoming stage this is the time he needs to do it Johnson banged up a bit over the last few weeks. They're hoping he's a little healthier today and go ahead and lead them to a victory. Let's look at a keys to the game for this one. Let's start off with Lafayette. Lemery, what do they have to do to get the win? Well, it's a great segue from Mike because you look at their offense, they have to protect the football. If they can do that, they can have long sustained drives. And defensively, it's just about being aggressive. Georgetown right now is struggling offensively. The best way to keep a team struggling is by being aggressive, make them make plays. And they also have to move the pocket for Sean O'Malley, a guy that does a great job throwing on the move, change that launch pad spot, and I think he can have some success. Let's look at the players to watch for this Leopard squad, and we start off at the tight end spot. He's a guy that I really like. Dylan Wadsworth is a – I think he's a pro talent. He's an H-back. He's going to do a lot of blocking. They're going to work him short in the short passing game, but for the most part, he's going to do a lot of blocking, which can open up their ground game, and then eventually they'll go with – to him downfield. Our next player to watch for this Lafayette Leopards team, it's on the defensive side of the ball, the linebacker Brandon Bryant. Tackles mean that you are always around the football, and this guy has a gang of tackles. And last year he was injured a lot, and now he's back healthy, and he's picking up right where he has left off throughout the course of his career. 109 tackles, two and a half sacks, and six TFLs, I'm sorry. Anytime you can put up those double-digit, way over double-digit tackle numbers, you're doing something very well. Our third player to watch, it's another receiver in Rocco Palumbo. He's a guy that's a taller wide receiver, uses his frame very well to shield off that defender, and does a great job in catching the football with his hands. You won't see any drop passes coming from Palumbo. Let's switch over to Georgetown and their keys to the game. Mike, what do the Hoyas have to do to get a victory? Well, I think the first thing is establish the run game. Take some pressure off of Gunther Johnson. This is a team that's only averaging 47 yards per game rushing the football, but their offense is built to run the football. So they need to kind of establish that run game early and then uh, you know start to, to open it up throwing the football downfield. Again, they need to be more efficient on third down. We said it earlier, 20% conversion percentage on third down right now is just not good enough. This defense needs some time to come back onto the sideline and and make some different adjustments. When you're having three and outs and only converting on 20% of the third downs, that makes it very difficult for them. And then they also need to limit the big plays on defense. Shane O'Malley, we've, or Sean O'Malley, we've already talked about. This is a kid who likes to throw the football down the field. He's not afraid to take shots. 
and he's got some good wide receivers, some good skill behind him. If they can limit the big plays on defense, they should have a good chance of winning this football game. And point that you make there, obviously, last time out against Bucknell, two pick sixes. Those were the two scores of the game for the Bison. Could be big there, maybe a chance to get some off of O'Malley. Let's look at our players to watch. We start off with the Hoyas big play man, Michael Darius. And, and Michael Darius is their guy on offense. He is their playmaker. He's had himself a breakout year this season. He's third in the Patriot League in uh, – in um excuse me he's second in the patriot league in receiving yards on the season third in touchdowns this is their big play guy this is the guy that gunther johnson needs to look to to create some plays down the field and stretch that defense out to create that that open space for the run game our second player to watch for the hoyas a little more of a possession guy a newbie and max edwards yeah max edwards just a freshman but but quietly having himself a pretty good season last week he had five receptions 84 yards both of them career highs he's expected to start today look for him to be another good viable option for gunther johnson to throw the football down the field too. Also had the touchdown catch against Fordham a few weeks back. Our third player to watch on the defensive side of the field for the Hoyas, the big man Wesley Bowers. He's coming off a huge week last week. Nine tackles was a career high for him. This kid, another another freshman player for, for Coach Scarlotta on this Georgetown team. He's having himself a very good season. Got banged up a couple weeks back. He came back last week, had a great a great game. Look for him to come in clutch today and uh, and really uh, you know lead that defense in a victory. And Bowers also helps move some things around, talking to Rob Scarlotta, saying, hey, he's a guy we can put out at the rush end, move some other guys inside, helps us get a little bit better of a pass rush. We'll see if he can help that defense out in what should be an interesting, hard-fought game between Lafayette and Georgetown. I mentioned Rob Scarlotta. Had a chance to catch up with him earlier in the day when Yosef Nasser talked to the coach. Coach Scarlotta, as you know, today is homecoming. I've seen a lot of energy from your players on the sidelines uh, in pregame warm-ups, players running, shouting, it's homecoming. The excitement is palpable. How do you channel that energy into getting off to a fast start here today? You know, we talked about it in the team meeting. It, it doesn't matter who we're playing. It's really just one man, one job today. We talked to the kids about playing hard the entire day. You know, today is our military appreciation day as well. We have a great organization that our corners coach, Harrison Bernstein, started soldiers to sidelines. So we had a chance this morning to talk about never being out of the fight and just playing hard. And, you know, no matter what happens today, being upbeat, intense, and just playing, you know, playing one play at a time. So a lot of coaching cliches, but they were definitely applicable today for us in this game. Your quarterback, Gunther Johnson, has shown a lot of promise running and passing the football. Um, how, what's the importance of getting him off to a fast start in your first 15, 20 plays here? Love to get him some completions. You know, he does a great job on the ground, and when the play breaks down, he can extend it. But we need to make sure that his completion rate that we're up in the 60, 70 percentile today um, to keep us on the field. You know, our third down conversion rate has to be great today to win this football game. You mentioned the third down conversion rate having to be great to win this football game. Uh, defensively, what do you guys have to do to get the job here against the freshman quarterback, O'Malley? You know, he, I, I wish we played him game one or two because every week he's getting better. You know, Coach Garrett's done a tremendous job of putting him in good spots. You know, Lafayette challenges you. They'll have a lot of different personnel packages, shifts, trades, and motions. And, you know, for our guys, they have to have their eyes in the right place, read their keys. And, you know, A number one is we need to stop the run game and make this thing one-dimensional. Coach Scarlotta, thanks for the time. Best of luck today, and uh, just have a blast out there. Great. Thanks very much. Jeremy, back to you. Thank you, Yosef, and thank you, Coach. These two teams somewhat similar. Again, just two wins on the season for Lafayette, one win for Georgetown. Lafayette, of course, in the conference race with those two wins. Let's take a look at these squads by the numbers. And, Mike, a lot of similar stats between these two teams. Well, I think the big key here is both offenses, has, they've been struggling all year, and that's just kind of the facts of it. You know, on the Lafayette side of things, you got Shane o or Sean O'Malley, who's just a freshman. You got a lot of young guys out there. So the production really just hasn't been there in terms of points per game, really in terms of, uh, of yards per game as well. And, uh, you know, you kind of see that on Georgetown side too. Yeah, and those are the two numbers that really just burn my eyes is the rush yards, and that leads right into third downs. You talked about it, Mike, where if you're not able to sustain drives and you can't help your defense out by staying on the field, you won't have success, which is why both teams – sit where they are in the standings. And it's it's funny, you talk about with this Lafayette team, they're a squad that kind of do what is in front of them. If it's a team that gives them a better passing matchup, they'll pass, they'll rush if it's the other way around. Um, but one of the reasons that rushing yardage is so low, Emory, is the fact they're playing two true freshmen on the offensive line. Uh, they're not trying to not run the ball. It's just really tough for them right now. And you look at 20 yards a game, that's pretty tough. And it's tough because you, you have those freshmen. People are still trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out where the, the audibles are, what the calls are, and that's why they're not as successful, like you mentioned. 
couple of notable inactives for the Hoyas today. Luke Morris, wide receiver, possession guy for this Hoya squad. Christian Bermudez also inactive as he's uh, dealing with a concussion. And it's interesting, Emery, when you look at Bermudez, a guy that's a little bit unsung, but he's very important to this team because of the fact he is very multiple in what he can do, not only as a blocker, but also as a runner. And that's where I was going to go with it because he's a guy that helps out their running game. And I thought last year he was a guy that probably should have gotten more carries as because he has that power to run the football. But as a blocker, he helps opens up, opens up their offense for everyone else. And, of course, Morris on the other side of things. Mike, you as an old quarterback, you know, one of those possession guys that can always help you move the chains. Absolutely. He's, he's a guy who's been around for a while. He's played a lot of football for this Georgetown offense. So having a guy like that out, you know, like you mentioned, it, a possession-type guy makes it a little bit difficult if you're the, the quarterback on those key third-down situations thinking, all right, who do I go to? You know, who are my, my possession guys that I know can, can secure a catch, maybe in some traffic? Let's go ahead and take a look at some starting lineups, and we'll start off with the Lafayette offense. And, of course, the Leopards, you know about O'Malley, but some of the other guys, one of the interesting ones, Matt Morazic. Morazic is one of the prolific receivers uh, for this Lafayette football program. And so when you have Morazic and Palombo out there on the flanks, it makes your job as a freshman. No wonder you're out there slinging the ball around. You have two outstanding targets to go to. And, of course, on the defensive side of things for Lafayette, Mrazic a little bit under uh, this season, under his normal numbers. We'll see what he does today. Defensively for Lafayette, they've got a lot of depth up front. Yeah, keep an eye on Jerry Poe, the strong side linebacker. I really like his game. Brandon Bryant is a direct beneficiary of what Poe is able to do up front along the line of scrimmage at that sandbacker spot, which is why Bryant is able to clean up and do a lot of great things at the second level. And one of the best things I love about this Lafayette defense is you look at the stats and you look at the overall tackles. Those three linebackers lead the team in tackles, one, two, and three. And that's what you want to see with a successful defense. You know, that defensive line getting the push, taking up those blocks, and those linebackers coming in and making tackles. Also, to keep an eye out for Jadis, the Syracuse transfer, pretty talented player up front as well. Let's look at the Georgetown starters in this one offensively first. And, of course, Mike, all year long, the Hoya is struggling for a running game. Alex Vallis hoping to provide some of that today. He has the ability. He has the skill. We've seen it out there in flashes throughout the last couple of seasons. Alex Vallis is a very good running back. If they can get him going, he's kind of the catalyst that, that this Georgetown offense needs to kind of get over that hump and start uh, you know, start getting that, that rush game really, uh, really honestly just productive in any kind of way. <laughs> Could really help them out. Let's look at the Georgetown defense quickly as well. And again, we talk about Bowers coming back, but some big play guys in the secondary. Absolutely. The secondary is where this Georgetown defense thrives. You know, you see a lot of their top tacklers are their secondary guys. You know, their safeties coming down and making plays. You know, obviously David Akiri is their big time playmaker, but also Blaze Brown having himself a really, really good season in terms of tackles, in terms of going out there and breaking up pa passes. That secondary is very solid for the Georgetown defense. You look out for the youngsters up front. Owen Kessler, just a freshman. Christian Tate, a sophomore guy, as it can make some very big plays for this Georgetown team. Well, almost ready for action here in our national anthem on also military appreciation today. Day today, we'll get into a little more of that as well as uh, I believe 100 servicemen being honored today. So it will be in attendance. Should be a fun one. A lot to celebrate here at Georgetown today. We'll take a quick pause for our national anthem. Please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by the Georgetown Chop.
Georgetown chimes with their version of our national anthem, almost ready for football here in D.C. as the Hoyas and Leopards get ready to go. Of course, if you want to continue watching, if you're watching right now on our Georgetown Facebook page, you can continue doing that on the Patriot League Network at WatchStadium.com. Again, if you want to keep watching this game after this point, go to WatchStadium.com. Com. Well, almost ready to go in this one, guys. And, of course, the Hoyas looking for that first Patriot League win. Let's look, uh, take a look back at last week's matchups for both these teams, or I should say, actually, the matchups, uh, the previous matchups for both squads. Holy Cross beating Georgetown last time out, 24-10, to Mike. And that one, Hoyas felt that they were just a few plays away from maybe winning that game. Yeah, it really came down to the fourth quarter in that game. The Hoyas were right there in it. And like you mentioned, just a few plays that, that should have gone their way, just a little bit better execution here and there, and uh, they might have been able to pull that one off, but unfortunately Holy Cross was able to just kind of pull away in that fourth quarter. And, of course, Lafayette, their last game two weeks ago, Emory, one of the zaniest games you will ever see. Lafayette loses that one with two pick sixes. And people wonder why coaches have gray hair or they age pretty quickly. You throw a pick six, 95-yard pick six in overtime, <laughs> That, again, the kid made a right. He made the right read, but just a bad throw left it hanging high and inside, and the guy ran it back the other way. And but both teams are the reason why they're are where they are the way they are because they're young teams trying to find a way to win these close games. And of course, Lafayette in the position as we mentioned before, they have one conference loss, so they're still in this as they still have some quality teams left. And really, Colgate kind of the favorite right now. Um, but they still could end up not uh, may being the champion depending on what happens. So, again, we shall see what goes on in today's matchup. Lafayette winning the toss. They will receive. Before we get into action, let's send it down to the fourth member of our crew, Yosef Nasser. In the midst of a 1-7 start for the Georgetown Hoyas, sophomore wide receiver Michael Darius has gotten off to a really hot start. He's got 34 receptions. 606 yards and five touchdowns on the season, leading the team in all categories. He's got two catches over 80 yards, and of six of his eight games, he's had a catch of 25 yards or more. Now, I talked to Coach Scarlotta earlier in the week, and he told me we have to make it a priority every week to get some targets going Michael's way. Coach Scarlotta also said that he hasn't been able to see a defender who's been able to go stride for stride with Michael Darius all season long said the teams are starting to put a safety over top with a cornerback underneath in an attempt to defend him. Uh, he said that we've got to be smart and make sure that we're using our other ep uh, weapons while also maximizing the talent that Michael has and that he's giving us. We'll see if he can make an impact in this game. Jeremy, back to you. Thank you, Yosef. And almost ready to get this one going. Lafayette in all white today. Georgetown in all navy with the silver helmets. Both squads looking sharp as these teams look to go ahead and get a victory today. And interestingly, Lafayette uh, electing to receive as opposed to deferring uh, or taking the ball there. And again, uh, Lafayette wanting to start off on offense, Mike, and I think probably a good move for them. I think so. I, I think this, this offense for Lafayette, if you can come out here first drive of the game and really open things up, establish some momentum early, maybe get some points on the board, you, the whole team just feels good about that. When you get rolling on offense, even as a defensive player, that offense starts moving a little bit. You kind of loosen up on defense. So um, I love the, the decision to receive the football here, and um, we'll see if it pays out for them. So Brad Hurst will kick off for the Hoyas. Back deep for Lafayette. It'll be C.J. Emil and Rashawn Merriweather. And we are ready to go on the hilltop. It's homecoming. Hoyas looking for a win in front of the homecoming crowd. And as... Hurst approaches, we are underway, low kick. Going to be taken by Emil at his five-yard line, looking for a seam up the middle, and he will be brought down across the 30-yard line. So good start for Lafayette. Yeah, I love the fact that they're taking the ball. It's that aggressive mentality that you have to have if you want to go, go come out here and get a win. So Lafayette will scrimmage from their 33-yard line. As we talked about before, just one loss last time out against Bucknell. Hoyas trailed the season, the, uh, the all-time series, 13-7. to O'Shawn O'Malley brings Lafayette out in that power pistol formation. Three wide receivers for the freshman quarterback. Handoff going to the right is Selwyn Simpson, and he's brought down after a gain of around three. 
And I know it was just a subtle little thing we saw there pre-snap, but you know, we mentioned earlier, Sean's just a freshman. He, he, he He's in his ninth game at this point, but he's still a young kid, young quarterback out there. He came up, made a check at the line of scrimmage on the very first play of the game. You know, that's, that, that's what you see from young freshmen as they progress throughout the season. And you just let kids like that play. You let them loose, and you let them learn on the fly. You see O'Malley there, the first freshman opener starter for the Leopards since Patriot League play began in 1986. And there's going to be a first down as finding his man out of the backfield, Will Eisler, for the completion and a gain of 10 and a first down. I love that play call. That's one of my favorite play calls when you fake the, the run going one way, come back, and that fullback or tight end is wide open in the flat. Just a safe throw for a freshman quarterback. So Lafayette with the first first down of the game. Morazic down low on your screen. Handoff this time goes to Brown. Outside, he'll be brought down after a gain of three on the play. And Deshaun Brown, one of the few seniors, you know, that, that really contributes to this team. You know, we mentioned in the pregame that a lot of, uh, there are a lot of freshmen, a lot of young guys out here that are contributing. He's one of the few guys that has a lot of experience back there. That was a beautiful job by him, reading the play out, stringing it out a little bit, sticking his foot in the ground and getting upfield and getting that three and four yard game. Good mix of play calling going on right now on the onset of this series. Now a second and seven, need to get it to the 45 of Georgetown for a first down. Wadsworth went in motion there as O'Malley back to throw. Pumps goes the other way. We'll find Wadsworth. Nice gain as he's across the sticks. Big hit as he gets there, but gets first down yardage after a gain of around eight. A little bit of east, a little bit of west. They hadn't gone downhill just yet, but I just love the movement of this offense right now, and they have Georgetown off balance. Yeah, and O'Malley's slowly starting to get himself into a rhythm. You can see it there on that very first little waggle, that rollout pass that they had. Those are the kind of plays that get a young quarterback into rhythm. And then a play right there, second and third read, found his guy. Simpson now in the backfield as Wadsworth again goes in motion. You'll see him move all over the place. They like to move their guys around, almost a trip in the backfield. But Simpson going to drag a tackler forward across the 35-yard line, give him a gain of nine. And you mentioned it earlier, Emery, just a really nice job so far, mixing up the play calls, getting a little bit of run game in there, getting a little bit of play action game, just straight drop back pass. Right now they have a good rhythm going on offense, and you can see it here in this offensive line. They're starting to get some momentum, some good push going forward, and that's when you start generating some runs like that, which opens up the pass game, which you might see here on a second and short. O'Malley in the gun. Fakes the handoff, rolling out, looking for a man, has nothing. He'll tuck it under, slides down, and I think going to give him maybe a bit of a short spot, though he's swinging to the slide. He'll be close to the sticks. And what you're seeing too, Mike, is formations. We've seen the power pistol. We've seen them under center, double tight, spread. You know, they, they've done a lot right here. And just a, this is a senior-level play right here by a freshman this part in the season. Absolutely. A senior-level play. He had the corner, but the corner for, for Georgetown was baiting him. He was wanting him to throw that pass, didn't throw it, just tried to pick up what he could. Extra blocker in. Simpson in the backfield. He'll take the handoff. He's got first down yardage and more as he barrels his way across the 30 down to around the 27. And what those double tight end sets do to a defense, is it expands their gap responsibility. And now you're asking those defensive ends to widen out just a hair, but they have to beat one-on-one -on -one blocks. They actually they have to beat double teams. And so that's why I'm a big fan of the power set that you're seeing from Lafayette, which is why they're having a lot of success moving this football downfield. Interesting formation here as both Wadsworth and Taggart in the game, almost that diamond formation. Wadsworth going to take it around the end, and he will be stoned as Williamson comes up from the corner spot and brings him down for a three-yard loss. And I feel like we talk about Jelani Williamson every week because he is that guy for that defense. Him and David Akiri lead the way out there, coming up, making big plays, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. You see it here, Lafayette trying to string it out, get to that edge, get some room. Jelani Williamson came up, delivered a fantastic tackle right to the lower body. Beautiful job there by Jelani Williamson. Interesting thing there, guys. The Before that play, Leopards were up to 21 yards. It's over their season average. <laughs> they just go back under with that loss there. Simpson's going to try and take it to the left. He'll be hit by a carry and dragged out of bounds after a minimal gain. Starting to see the swagger from that secondary start to show up for Georgetown. I mean, we talk about Jelani Williamson. He has a hoodie on. 
You, know, you have to be a rugged <laughs> defender when you're wearing a hoodie uh, back there in the secondary. But just a good job answering the call because Lafayette looked as if they were marching this football downfield. Defense looked to be looks to be uh, tightening up right now on this third and long. Yeah, and plays like that by Williamson coming up and, and delivering a, 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 a play like that for on first down for no gain. Like those plays might not look like much, but now you're sitting here at third and 11. Like that was a huge play for this defense. Now they need to come up with a stop. C.J. Emile now in the game as they fake the pitch to him, go the other way, set up the screen to Palumbo. He'll be hit and brought down well short of first down yardage. Good play there by the corner, Ramon Lyons, to make the secure tackle. Yeah, and that was actually a screen that was set up pretty nicely by the Lafayette offense. They faked it one way, came back through the screen the other way, but uh, Joey Chenoweth, who caught that pass there, didn't quite give his linemen enough time to get out there. Beautiful design there, faking the toss, but his linemen are right there waiting for him. He needs to come back against those blocks and let those big boys get out there and make a play for him. So Jeffrey Cordenbrock comes on. This will be a 42-yard attempt from the near hash. Kick is up, and the kick will be no good. So the Hoya defense gets the stand after some great early play by Lafayette. And the Hoyas keep a zero on the board for the Leopards. It's a great defensive stand right there because, again, the way their offense was cooking, it, was, it looked as if they are going to drive down the field and get points. But we saw them do a great job tighten up defensively and force this missed field goal. Yeah, and I think you kind of mentioned it there earlier when we were talking about Jelani Williamson. You see that secondary. We talked about them when we were talking about the starters. That secondary is the heart and soul of that defense. When they come up and make big plays, you just see the entire defense just rally around them. So Vallis will start off in the backfield next to Gunther Johnson, the 6-1 sophomore out of Arizona, a transfer from Arizona as well, as Vallis will take it off left tackle, banged down by the linebacker as he gets a gain of around two on the play. You saw right there our spotlight player in the beginning, Brandon Bryant with the boom on that play, but that was just great team defense by Lafayette, really crowding that line of scrimmage and, and making it tough for Vallis to get some positive yards. And it's going to be tough for them to run the football all day, honestly. This is a very good rush defense for Lafayette. You know, we talked about it earlier, those, those three linebackers just making all the tackles for this defense. And, and, and that's that's the, what you see in a good rushing defense. And, and it's going to be tough for them to run the football. They need to kind of stretch the field out, throwing the ball. Vallis will take it the other way and brought down from behind. Again, it's Lafayette making big plays there. I believe coming up, Bo Bosch from the defensive end spot. And guys, we talked about the depth. They really say they go about 10 deep up front. Guys are always fresh. And that's the key. If you're always fresh up front, the guy behind you knows that he's going to get his opportunity. So that kind of pushes the guy in front of him to play his best because you don't want the guy behind you taking your spot. So, again, when you're playing great team defense and everyone gets involved, it, it keeps everyone in tune to what's going on out there on the field. McLaughlin and Jessen out there along with Darius and Williams. McLaughlin goes in motion. Vallis still you're back in the backfield. Johnson. Throws it over the middle, and Vallis, his foot slipped out from under him, made, would have made the catch short of the sticks and probably wouldn't have gotten a first down. A yeah, very conservative opening drive here for the Georgetown defense. Two run plays, quick little dump off pass play on that third down. You know, they just have not performed well enough this year to, for me to really think that this is an effective way to run the drive. They need to open the play, open the, the playbook up a little bit and start stretching the field. They have so many weapons with those, those wide receivers, with Darius and, and those different guys out there. Stretch the field, which would then open up your run game. We'll see if they adjust to that here in the game. Here's Hurst's kick. Bit of a tail wagger. Can be taken by Chenoweth, and he's got some room to maneuver as he's already across the 50, and a good special teams tackle there to bring him down. Would have been a much bigger gain, if not for A.J. Schimmelfennig, to bring him down. But again, Lafayette in good field position. Yeah, well, Mike talked about Georgetown's offense. You, you saw it on that first series, as we see the punt return here on the replay. You saw in that first series by Lafayette, they didn't really spread the utilize different formations to get things accomplished. And I think Georgetown can do the same thing. You may not have to go out there and pull wide receiver sets. You can go in a bunch. You can just be creative to find different ways to move the football. That's what we saw the Leopards do in their opening series. So Lafayette back out there after the missed field goal on their opening salvo. A little over seven minutes to go in the opening quarter here on homecoming on the hilltop. O'Malley back to throw over the middle, and he misses greatly. Closest player to it 
was David Akiri actually looking on that play for Nick Pearson, a guy who they weren't sure if he would play this week, has really been a favorite target of his quarterback O'Malley as of late. Yeah, just a little bit of miscommunication there be between Pearson and O'Malley. O'Malley thought he was going to break that post off. Pearson did a little bit of a post move, took it out into the fade. He actually had the move done pretty well on David Akiri. Had they been on the same page there, they might have had a touchdown. Of course, last time these two teams met, Lafayette a two-touchdown victor. This time, Brown trying to get around the end, and Dan Yankovic gets him out of bounds for a loss on the play. So the linebacker coming up and making the play there. Back to Pearson quickly, guys. He's a guy they said really has been a favorite target for O'Malley on the season. Youngster, he's got 12 catches on the season, 165, averaging though 13.8 yards per game. So anytime you get a receiver doing that, he's doing some good things. He's doing some great things. And what I like about Georgetown's defense is that by position, they can fool you because you see Dan Yank Yankovic as a linebacker, but he's built like a strong safety. And so they got a lot of speed and athleticism at the second and third levels. Third and 11. The Georgetown defense looks for another stop. O'Malley going to be flushed out. It's got some space across the field. He finds Morazic for a big gain and a first down. And we talked about it at the beginning of the game, guys. This kid just defines the word gunslinger, and that was a very dangerous throw. It was. On the, on the field from a, sta uh, from a fan's perspective, that looks like a great play. He found his guy in the middle of the field, but this is a very dangerous throw. One of the main rules as a quarterback is never throwing across your body. This is what he does here because you can't see guys following you as you're rolling out, but this is what he does. He, he makes plays like that. Sometimes he makes some mistakes. Sometimes they work out for him, and he loves to just sling the ball around the field. Now Simpson in the backfield for Lafayette as they have mixed up those running backs today already. And he's going to be hit in the backfield and brought down. Coming up again from the corner spot is Ramon Lyons. And that was just a great form tackle by Lyons. And this is a guy that's short but not small. So when he gets good technique, he's going to blow you up just like he did right there behind the line of scrimmage. Again, defensively, when their secondary makes plays, the rest of this defense just gets up and, and, and follows suit. So we'll see how they respond on the second and long. One good thing about this Hoya defense is those secondary guys aren't afraid to make tackles. It's always good to see. It's almost like wide receivers who are willing to block just seems to make the unit better. Second and 12. Handoff Simpson up the middle. Again hit and brought down. This time it's the big guy in the middle, Wesley Bowers. Yeah, Wesley Bowers did a great job reading that play. Saw the, the offensive line start to stretch out. Found the gap that they were trying to run into and just came in and blew that gap right up. Great form tackle. You see it here. You see the little hole start to form. Wesley Bowers comes in and says, I don't think so. Let me close this thing up real fast. He's one of the few that's actually built like his position. <laughs> a, a big, thick middle linebacker that arrives with bad intentions in mind. He's listed at six foot, maybe a bit shorter than that. But yeah, he is built down low. Now moves out to a rush end spot. Let's see if he can get some pressure on O'Malley this time on this third and 12 pistol set. They're going to hand it off again as Simpson brought down right at the original line of scrimmage. So Lafayette going a bit conservative. Looks like they're going to try another field goal. Well, this won't show up in the stat sheet, but this was another great play by Wesley Bowers. You, you mentioned Jeremy that he was lined up as a rushing, but you see him at the top of your screen play with his hands and his eyes, get off that block and make the tackle. Kept his inside arm free because he had great position on that offensive tackle and was able to stop the runner right near the line of scrimmage. So this one longer than the last one, spotted just outside the 33. So a 43-year-old field goal for Corden Brock. Kick is up, Hoyas almost get in there, and this one is going to be missed again. So Lafayette, two field goal attempts and two misses so far today. And, and I think you said it best there right before that kick, you know, a very conservative play call on third down for, you know, a, a kicker who struggled a little bit on the season and, you know, honestly wasn't all that close on his first attempt. You would think on that third down play, they try and get at least a little bit closer. Maybe they don't pick up that first down, but maybe they pick up six, seven, eight yards, get a little bit closer for their kicker. But a very conservative play on that third down uh, leads to, uh, to another missed kick. And I thought they were setting it up to go for it on fourth down with that play call. You're right. Carl Thomas now into the game, the junior out of Missouri. Quick screen out to Darius, who drops the ball, and they will say it is a forward pass as Lafayette tried to run it in, but clearly a forward pass on that play. And that'll go down as a stat in the stat sheet, obviously, as a drop passing completion, you know, gain of nothing. 
but it's the intention, the way that they called that play first down. They're not trying to run the football in the teeth of the defense, trying to get it out to Darius, their big play guy. Just a little bit of screen. Hopefully he can break one tackle, and that's when he breaks loose there. So I like the play call. We'll see if it, uh, if it keeps up here on this drive. Darius out wide, maybe formationally trying to set something up for the Hoyas here as the defensive front for Lafayette stems. Johnson's going to take off and run, and he's got some room to do it. He'll get it out across the 35-yard line, gain of 13, and a first down for the Hoyas. Yeah, something to watch right now for the, the rest of this game. I've seen in the first couple of series in this ball game, multiple players on both sides of the ball slip and fall. So maybe the field's a little bit slick. It hadn't rained the night before, but good job by Johnson taking off and running, picking up the person, getting out of bounds. So Thomas remains in as the running back. Fake to him. Gunther looking deep, nothing there. He'll again look to run. Now he looks to throw. Has a man open, but he can't throw it on the run as Jessen had cleared, but misfires a bit. Yeah, we talked about it. You know, one of the keys for him was to, to create big plays. And it doesn't have to be with his arm. This is a guy who has four touchdowns on the year. If he didn't, if the, the stats against sacks didn't count towards his rushing yards, he would be second on the team in three and a half games that he's played. This is a guy who knows how to run the football. He knows how to make plays with his feet. You know, creating those big plays can come just scrambling and, and, and making some yardage and, and making a couple of defenders miss. Played under Rich Rod at Arizona, so obviously he can run it. That's what they look for their, for their quarterbacks out there in the desert, and Thomas stopped after a one-yard game. And what that is going to do is going to calm the pressure that's going to come from that Leopards defense. They, they won't be as aggressive. You're going to see those defensive ends tend to try to maintain the line of scrimmage and keep an eye on where he's going to be, which will then give him time back there to find guys deep downfield in the passing game. So I like how he's trying to get his ground game going to get the passing game going for this offense. Yeah, and you said it best, that play that he escaped there, that was almost an all-out blitz for the Lafayette defense. He got out. That's going to keep them away from, from running plays like that. Third and nine, and now some movement up front as Lafayette was showing blitz, and the Hoya offensive line couldn't hold their water. I believe that one goes on Ryan Jelinek, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hoyas with a few folks from Pittsburgh up front. Nick James also out of the Steel City. So now a third and 14. Of course, another Yarl's favorite name, Amanda Cool, and a former sideline reporter. She's Steel City as well. Pittsburgh. Third and 14. Need to get out to the 49-yard line for a first down. Johnson throws and looking for Darius and good coverage on that play by Philip Parham incomplete and the Hoyas will punt again. Yeah, just bad timing there between between Johnson and Darius. Johnson took a little bit of a drop on that play, but it was a quick out. That's a play like that where a quarterback honestly just needs to catch the football, take a step and get the ball out. Just a little late on that play. Defense made a good read on it and uh, now another punt coming for the Georgetown offense. I don't mind him taking the shot. At least it's shown that he's willing to make a tight window throw, and that, to me, I think that's a small victory for their passing game. So Hurst with a rugby-style punt. This one shanked a bit off the side of his foot. Will end up out of bounds right at the Lafayette 45-yard line. So it's been a strength of the Hoyas all year long, Hurst punting, but the first two times, one bad directionally, and this one just not very long. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things that, you know, you, you've talked about it on both starting drives now. This is another great starting field position for this Leopard offense. They have zero points to show for it. If you're the Georgetown defense, you're feeling pretty good about yourself right now. But if you're the Lafayette offense, you also feel a little bit good. You've gotten some things moving. You've gotten into field goal range. Now at this point, your mindset has to be, we need to finish. No more field goal attempts. No more, you know, long third downs. We need to finish. We need to get touchdowns. Emil into the game now. He'll take the toss sweep, trying to get to the outside. Good blocking out there, and he gets a nice gain as Christian Tate bangs him down, but not until a gain of seven. Normally, I'm not a fan of running the, the pitch or the toss to the short side of the field, but I like that particular play call because they had numbers. The only thing I would rather is when, you, when you're running short side pitch, quickly pitch it to me. Don't loft it. That's more of a zone play. When you quick pitch it, it's more like, okay, I got it in my hands. Now I can read my blocks faster and get upfield. She has a defensive line, and that was one of my favorites. I didn't have to run that far to hit you <laughs> really hard. Seconds and three. 
as Jefferson's going to jump off sides. And officials will talk about it, but I think it's going to be encroachment. So O'Malley gets him with the hard count. Actually had a chance to chat with Brian Jefferson a little bit yesterday after their walkthrough practice. We'll see right there, makes contact. And really as all these kids for Georgetown are really impressive guys and kind of talked about the leadership that he's taken on that up front group just saying, hey, we've got a lot of shared experiences, shared stories, so it's, it's big for us. But he did say one thing he's been able to do, kind of stir some things up friendly between Owen Kessler and Kingsley Umemba, some of the freshmen who are playing, just kind of needle him and say, hey, he's doing this better than you. You need to do a little bit better. Thinks he's really kind of got a little extra motivation out of those guys. Over the middle and caught for a gain of around five on the play, going to the tight end, Jake Taggart. And just, just going off that, it's one of those things that you love to see a team that has groups of guys, groups of players that are so close and they just push each other. Those are the best teams out there that have, you know, you're sitting in the meeting room with each other and you just challenge each other. You say, hey, I bet you I can do this better than you or I am doing this better than you. If I hear that as a player, I'm going to push myself throughout that week to be better than that guy at whatever he's challenging me at. Palumbo in motion now going back. A staple of this offense under John Garrett. Simpson up the middle for a gain of two on the play on what could be the final play of the quarter. We'll see if Lafayette gets one more off. I love the pace of this game. I think both teams have come out and, and really said, you know what, we're going to show that we are a better football team than our record indicates, and they're pushing the tempo, pushing the pace, and we're getting a great football game so far because of it. And, it, and it's one of those things, with, especially with Lafayette's offense. You know, this is a huddle offense. This is not a spread, try and get up to the ball as fast as you can. They huddle up, but their pace is still fantastic on offense, getting plays off and, and positive plays to get that momentum moving. That will do it for the first quarter. No score on the Hilltop, Georgetown and Lafayette. You're watching today's contest on the Patriot League Network on Stadium. You're a Georgetown Hoyas fan. You want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up. Shop.guhoyas.com. You'll find an awesome selection of Georgetown items, including jerseys, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, office, or even your car with the best selection of Hoyas gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan. Head to shop.guhoyas.com. No score in our first quarter. A few highlights as we get back to play here. Sean O'Malley getting some things going. And now O'Malley going to be hit and brought down. And he fumbles the ball. Tate picks it up. And we may have a scoring opportunity for Georgetown. They're going to go ahead and mark him down on the play as Christian Tate gets the fumble. Now the question is, are they going to call it a fumble or just call it a big sack? I think they're going to go with the, the latter, guys. Yeah, and I know it's not going to make the Georgetown fans happy, but from, from our view, almost directly in front of the play here, it looked like his knee was down. As soon as he came down, the ball got stripped. You know, obviously a huge break for the Lafayette uh, offense there and a tough break if you're the Georgetown defense. Great job pursuing, getting that sack, and then Christian Tate just hustling his way down in the end zone. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to count, though. We almost got a Peisman candidate right there with a fat man <laughs> touchdown, but they called him down rightfully, so he was, he was down. But I want to see the carnage. I want to see the big guy get in the end zone. It's always fun, too, because they always come up with the best <laughs> exactly. celebrations. When the big guys get in there, it's so rare for them that they come up with some crazy celebrations. It just makes it that much more, you know, that much more special scoring a touchdown. Well, because those guys are, it's, you know, the power dynamics of a football team. The defensive line and receivers are normally the, the troublemakers. <laughs> yeah, so when they get a chance to showcase 
they will do some of the most outrageous things. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, Rob Scarlotta is still getting an explanation right now from the official, but I think, Mike, I think your eyes are right. I think he was down on the play. Um, though Georgetown doesn't want that to be the case because they just got a big play. One, they Really, they need to get a few big plays like that. Remember their one lone win of the season, they got the big play, the fumble return touchdown by Williamson for the game winner. But that will be a punting situation now as the Georgetown defense holds again and lays Brown back deep, going to fair catch it inside his 10-yard line back at the six. So again, field position battle not going Georgetown's way, but they get another stop. Yeah, it's going to be huge, man. Uh, this is a big series for them offensively. Their defense has been playing outstanding so far in this ball game. They've really responded to what Lafayette has tried to do to them offensively. So we'll see what we're, we're going to get from their offense this time around. And I think this is a huge possession here for this Georgetown offense. You know, yes, we just had the, the break in between quarters, but that first quarter, Lafayette had the ball for 11 minutes and 39 seconds compared to Georgetown having it for 321. That is a lot of time for that defense to be out on the field. They need a little breather here. That's a good point. Georgetown with just 15 total yards all on the ground. Gunther Johnson yet to complete a pass. Vallis in the backfield with him. Hands off, and again, Vallis finds some room through the initial push of the line, but then met in the hole as he's knocked backwards by Trent Croson. Yeah, Trent Croson just coming in from his safety spot, filling some gaps that his linebackers had to make. Alex Vallis broke through that line thinking, hey, I got a pretty nice little hole here, and Grosson came in and just absolutely shut him down on that one. This great form tackle by safety wearing the Gary Fensick jersey. Wow, you're going back hey, on that that's one. What I, hey. Neves wasn't even born yet. When exactly. Was playing. <laughs> a little too far for me. <laughs> Shotgun formation, two backs in the backfield. Now Vallis goes in motion. Johnson looking out in the flats, going to make the completion to Darius all the way out of the 20 for a first down. Love the timing route right there. That's one of the more uncoverable routes in football, that timing out deep to the, uh, to the sideline. Also the turn route as well. So. I just like what they're doing right now. Sometimes I, I wonder if spreading the field against this athletic defense is kind of playing into their strength. We'll see if they get back to that downhill ground game. So Johnson, again in the shotgun, looks over the middle, and he will be incomplete looking for Max Edwards, but it's a laundry fest on the field as well. Have some pass interference and another Hoya first down. I believe that was Yasir Thomas. So actually, we will have two fouls on the play. They will offset. See, there's the interference. Yeah, Thomas clearly coming in late, but unfortunately, you know, it's it's just that kind of year for Georgetown. You know, you just think you got a free 15 yards and then you know, holding kind of cancels out both penalties there. So again, they'll replay first down, first and 10. Johnson claps for that snap and then sees what the Lafayette defense will do and sometimes checks the play, sometimes does not. Now you see Vallis moving over on one side, changing the strength of the formation a bit. Johnson. Can't find his man out in the flat, and that's just a flat-out drop for the Hoyas and wide receiver, Dejon Williams. Those are the layups that you expect them to make, man. That's how you help out a quarterback. And, again, good play call, just bad execution. The receiver was open. Quarterback read it, gave, it, gave him a chance to make a play. He, just, he has to catch that football. Because he had room to, to make that reception, turn up and make something happen, but catch the football first. Now a second and 10 for the Hoyas. Option here, great catch by Vallis just to keep it from being a fumble. Now a big game, but a flag down on the play. And this one's likely coming back. And it looks like it might be a hold there on the freshman, Max Edwards, getting to the outside. Again. And it will be actually on Williams, so back to back. Tough plays on Dejon Williams. Drops the pitch. 
Shaw drops a quick pass, and then on that pitch out to Vallis, ends up with a hold. You love the effort, but you have to get your hands inside to where you're getting a good block and not a hold. After the penalty, second and 16. The Carl 14. Thomas now into the game, and again, the Hoyas will go with that two tailback set, flanking Gunther Johnson. Looking at a second and 16 here. Quick pass out in the flat to Vallis. Nice cut back to get close to the 20 yard line in the original line of scrimmage. And you can see Coach Scarlotta just trying to find something that can just get this offense going a little bit. They've had plays, and this is one thing I know he, he's, you know, just been frustrated about throughout the season, is they have plays open. You know, we've seen two drops so far in this game on wide receivers trying to turn up the field without the football. You know, some things have been there that they just have not been able to execute. He's just doing everything he can right now to just try and find something to get that first down, and hopefully that kind of gets things moving for this offense. And no safeties back deep right now. You've seen the Hoyas have to deal with this all year long. Teams keeping everyone in the box. Johnson trying to beat him deep, going for Darius, and this will be almost caught, but likely would have been out of bounds anyway. Philip Parham on the coverage for the Leopards. And I know that's an incomplete pass, but you know you mentioned it right before the play. They were running a cover zero defense, or at least they disguised it as one, which then allows you to get guys behind the defense, and they have to take a shot in that situation. So yes, it wasn't completed, but when you see that defense come pressing up, you got a guy like Darius on the outside, one-on-one -on -one with a DB. You have to take that shot every single time it's available. Love the execute, love the the response to the recognition, but not the execution. But you love that they're taking chances. Hurst out for another punt, and again, this one's going to be short. It's going to take a bit of a Georgetown bounce, and then grabbed by Lions. And let it bounce all the way out. But again, Lafayette, I believe, for the second time today, will start on the Georgetown side of the field. And, and guys, I don't know if it's just something I you know, haven't really paid too much attention to, but I don't remember Brad Hurst doing this many rugby-style punts. And, you know, when he sits back there and just does your traditional punt, this is a guy who's averaging over 42 yards a punt. With this rugby style, he's, he seems to be just a little bit off. I don't know if this is something that they've been kind of doing all year, if they're kind of switching into it now. He definitely did it a few times against Fordham. I remember he drew that roughing the kicker call on a rugby-style punt, but you know, he's definitely not on his game so far today, averaging just over 28 yards per kick. Up the middle and not much running room is Simpson as he may not even get back to the line of scrimmage. One thing you like about Sean O'Malley and what he's doing offensively is that he has complete control of what's going on. So he's not rattled. I, I know this is week 10 in college football. But still, you, when you're seeing a freshman out there for the first time, they, they normally are rattled. But this guy has complete control. He's calmed down. He's He has everything where it needs to be. And guys are really responding to it. Jake Johnson out there now for the Hoyas. Williamson off the field. Again, O'Malley, little bunch sets. He finds Wadsworth for a minimal gain, and that time Owen Kessler, the defensive end, out in coverage. They're just doing a good job at making plays. You know, that's what this defense does. You know, they they just find ways to, to bend but don't break, and that's what they've been doing all year long. That's what they've been doing in this game so far. You know, you mentioned it. This is their second drive at least that they've started inside the Georgetown side of the field, and they still haven't given up any points yet. I mean, this is a bend, don't break defense that just finds ways to make plays and limit the offense. Of course, Luke Thompson on the other sideline, former Georgetown defensive coordinator Lafayette, probably a little bit proud of his former troops, though probably doesn't want to see them do that well today, considering he's coaching the Leopards. Third, and we'll call it eight, need to get to the 35, finds a meal out in the flat, but there's Bowers right on the spot to bring him down four yards short of the sticks. He's going to be a problem moving forward in the Patriot League. Absolutely. He's going to be an outstanding linebacker, man. You saw him just plant and accelerate to that ball carrier, really held that reception to no gain, essentially, as the refs blew the whistle. So good defensive stance once again by Georgetown. And, yes, they really need their offense to step up and make plays. Can those receivers finally start helping out the quarterback by catching the ball? Boy, is really thinking they found a steal. And Bowers, guy that played at Bishop McNamara in D.C., the local Catholic League standout programs and he's a guy that held his own against them this is going to be a coffin corner kick 
down inside the 10. Question is, what is the penalty for? At this point, I won't be surprised if it's traveling. <laughs> <laughs> They've called a, bit of, a little bit of everything so far in this ball game. So it will be illegal formation. Isn't that the traveling signal? Yeah, it is, I actually. It Look is. at you. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Send you over to the Thompson Center. Exactly. So Rob Scarlotta going to get the explanation from the officials, and I think he's going to make them re-kick just because of that good coffin corner kick by Turk. And the reason why you have them re-kick is those guys just haul tail all the way down the field not to do it again, so you may get a bigger return uh, because of it. So they'll switch up punt returners as well. Blaze Brown more their safety punt returner. Well, Darius is more their big play guy. Michael Turk will again punt. And if you're asking yourself at home, he is the nephew of both Matt and the late Dan Turk, former NFL players. Here's the kick. This one, a bit longer. And it is going to take another Lafayette bounce and going to be about the same spot as it was contacted at the seven. So same thing, Turk with a big kick, putting Georgetown in a tough predicament. Yeah, you can't ask for a better punt if you're, if you're Michael Turk there. I mean, that first punt he had when they had the penalty, he pinned that one in the seven-yard line. Second punt, he says, okay, give me five more yards. Watch what I can do. Pins it now on the six-yard line. So, I mean, just a great job there by Michael Turk thinking, I need to pin these guys deep. Get our offense on the field, or get our defense on the field, and hopefully pin them deep and give our offense another good field position. And he dropped that football on the previous punt traditionally, but this one he dropped it straight down to where he's kicking the point of the ball and got that turnover where, where it hung up there and bounced right where he wanted it to bounce. Checked up like a nine iron. Still no score as we're into the second quarter. Pass will be almost picked off, probably should have been, was looking for Jess, and now a flag goes down as well, but unable to come up with that pick was Eric Mitchell. Let's see what we have. Does it look like the umpire threw that one? Is a legal man downfield? They'll come over in conference with Luke Thompson, the defensive coordinator. I think they'll decline the penalty. How does that happen on a slant out combination? Is it possible one of the guys was covered up? Maybe one of the receivers? It's possible, yeah. Possible, Absolutely. yeah. Seeming like that would be the one way that could happen because usually you see those illegal men downfield on screens. Look like some movement up front, free play. Possibly this one's going to be picked off by Lafayette, trying to take it all the way back as Philip Parham still cutting through defenders, and Parham's going to find his way into the end zone, but you would expect this to be offsides on Lafayette. Let's wait for the officials to sort this one out. Yeah, that was a free play opportunity. So it will be, it looked like about three leopards jumped and see Rob Scarlotta there, cool, calm and collected. Yeah. And I know that play resulted in a pick, but a really nice job there by, by Johnson, knowing he had the free play. Just throw it up. Just throw Let it up. your guy make a play, see if he can go out there. I mean, for all we know, he comes up, makes a great catch, breaks one tackle and he's gone for 99 yards. So, you know, a nice job there by Johnson, knowing he had the play and just finding his guy, the deepest guy downfield and throwing it up and giving him a chance. Smart football player, man. Of course, his father, former offensive lineman at Arizona. So football in his blood. Thomas bangs forward, and nice second effort's going to get him the five-yard gain and a first down. And what they're doing now is just giving their defense a rest, man. Now, I love that they're slowly swinging at this tree, and they're going to eventually knock it down if they stick with it, but guys are just doing what they're supposed to do offensively and giving those guys that help set this up a big-time rest. Thomas remains in the backfield alongside Johnson. Quick screen to Jessen this time, had to bobble the catch, and he'll be brought down just across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, guys, you know, just watching this, this Leopard defense play as, as we get further into the game here, 
they're doing a phenomenal job from a secondary perspective at disguising what they're running. We saw a couple a couple of drives ago, you know, these guys looking like they're playing cover one. They dropped out into a cover three. You know, guys fell back off what they were doing. That is extremely hard for an offense to look at, digest, and then know what your assignments are when, when defenses are disguising coverages like that. Pair of receivers each way. Johnson hands off on the read option, and it will go for a gain of around four on the play, set up a third manageable for the Hoyas. Yeah, just to build on what Mike said, for me as a running back, it would completely throw it off, especially if they're bringing pressure, because now you think, okay, well, this guy's coming. That's that's my responsibility if he's coming off the edge. They drop off. Now the guy that you thought was coming, he comes right up the middle, and you whiff on the block, and you get your quarterback killed. Option again, pitch out. Thomas going to put this one on the turf, and it is going to be picked up by Lafayette. They're going to take it in for a score. Johnny on the spot, Yasir Thomas. Are they waving this one off, or are they going to say it's a touchdown? Again, the officials talking it over. Whoa. Yeah, because you pitch it forward now. It's a little subtle. That's I why I don't know about that one. That's second defense touchdown. Uh, <laughs> a lot yeah, second second touchdown by Tom Thomas <laughs> exactly. that got called back. I got to see this one again because I think this was a. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's not, not even close. close. That's not close. Not yeah. even close. Hoyas catch a huge break on that play as John Garrett's out on the field and he has got a point. If there we had instant replay today, I think that would be a Lafayette to at least their ball. That would, you know, that would be one of those instant replays that they put the headset on and take it right off. It right, was yeah. that obvious. And how they missed that call, you know, it's unfortunate for Lafayette. Great, great for Georgetown, but that is a huge, huge miss for the uh, the the officiating crew here. Credit to the Georgetown Hoyer who sold them. On that four well, pass. Thomas was waving his guys off the field. Good actor. He's got a career there, maybe. Hurst, more traditional punt. This one a lot better. And now the Hoyas run into the return, man, as Chenoweth gets run over. As coming up from the gunner spot, Andre Denove, a guy the Hoyas really like, but that's not a play you'll want to see if you're Rob Scarlotta. Yeah, just a freshman, freshman mistake on that one, honestly, not getting his eyes up, not figuring out where the returner is here. And, uh, and bumping him on the return. So, you know, that's going to cost him 15 yards. It's been a cascade of problems in the early part of the second quarter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we talked about in the first quarter <laughs> how great of a rhythm the game was going. Both teams were kind of feeling each other out here in the second quarter so far. It's been one thing after another, penalty after penalty, that's just really stopping both teams from doing anything. And yeah, this is where the 3-13 and 13 combined record comes into play. Absolutely. Yeah, this is why. They look undefeated in the first quarter, and then we start to see the sloppiness, and hopefully they can get back to it. Uh, but this series for Lafayette, we talked about Georgetown's offense, but Lafayette's offense has quietly stagnated. Tell you what, we always talk about ball don't lie in basketball, but maybe that's a little bit of it in football after what clearly should have been a Lafayette touchdown. They catch a break there on Deneuve running into the punt returner for Lafayette. So again, I believe the third time today, Leopards will start on the Georgetown side of the field, yet to score any points. Barely get that play off. Going around the end is Brown, and he'll be wrapped up by Yankovic, coming up with the collar from behind, looking like a rodeo guy, brings him down for a loss of one. Yeah, and if you're at the Lafayette offense right now, you know, kind of going off your point, this is the time where, as an offense, you, you look at each other and you go, all right, we need to pick our defense up. They just scored two touchdowns. Both of them got called back. One of them, on it was our fault. One of them was a terrible officiating call. We need to pick this defense up. They've been playing great for us. Now let's go get some points. Let's go throw seven points on the board. Now bunch set, right side of the formation. They'll look to run to it. Emil trying to get to the outside, finds a bit of a seam, then gets banged down. They had his legs taken out by Wilson, and then Yankovic again coming like a missile to finish the playoff. That's the second time he has made a great play. The first, the previous play on first down, he blew up the guard, then chased down around the backside. Here, Lafayette tried to outsmart him and do formationally to get outside, and they were able to chase down and make the play once again. Again, you're seeing Bowers on the play. He's getting after it, so. Third and five, need to get to the 35-yard line for a first down. 
Three receivers and the tight end Wadsworth in the formation for the Leopards. O'Malley hands off to Emil, tries to go inside, now cuts it back. Great piece of running by him, and it looks like he'll be just short of the sticks. But Emory, you got to like that. Yeah, you got to negotiate yourself in and out of traffic like a New York cab in some situations. He did just that to pick up what I thought was a first down, but they're going to call it fourth and short. You got to go for it here. Yeah, and Emory, I know you can appreciate the way C.J. Emile is playing right now. He's you know listed as the, the third string running back, but they're really running back by, com by committee. But the cuts that he's been making so far, just stretching it out, and getting that one foot in the ground, and getting you know getting three or four yards every time he's touching the uh, touching the football. So it's short. The bigger back Simpson into the game. They'll fake the handoff, looking for the wide open man, and they find him out in the flat and all the way down inside the ten yard line goes Will Filler. Excuse me, on the play, it's Will Eisler with the big catch and run. You got to love that, Mike. Ooh. They trust their freshman quarterback Ooh. to throw the ball on fourth and inches. Plays like that just make me happy, honestly. You know, a beautiful design here, play action. They had been loading the box up to stop the run. A beautifully designed and a beautifully executed play action pass. Get that big boy out in the flats all by himself. Let him rumble down the field. A lot of trust. It's a big call there by John Garrett, also his own offensive coordinator as the head coach at Lafayette. Now rolling, O'Malley's got a man. He's going to make the catch and dies forward. And they're saying he stays in bounds. So a great play there to get in the end zone, making the grab. Nick Pearson, one of O'Malley's favorites, and he put six on the board for Lafayette. I just love the trust that they have in this young freshman quarterback. And that's one of those near misses by Georgetown, but that placement was perfect to where just outside where it needs to be. And just a great individual effort right there. He stepped out of bounds, and the ref looked right at it. And <laughs> so two missed calls, one went their way, one didn't. Exactly. So, you know, karmically it works out. Right. And that one booted through by <laughs> Corden Brock. So not a day to write home about for the officials in this game. That was a clear miss, as you saw on your screen there. But again, maybe it all evens out after the ones they should have had. We'll check the replay out again. and. Can't get any closer than that, folks, and that's on the line. Yeah, and absolutely, and honestly, it's one of those things you kind of hear it talked about a lot, you know, from some announcing crews. When you wear those white shoes, all white shoes on a white line, it makes it a little difficult for those guys to see when those guys are moving so fast. So, you know, you might give that one a little bit of a break, but again, karmically, it works out for them. They lost one, got one back, so everything's all set. You know, we can restart <laughs> we can on restart. the officiating here. <laughs> we'll take a restart. And uh, hopefully they can, you know, not miss any more blatant calls like that. But, you know, to your point, Emery, just a great job there by the Lafayette, the Lafayette offense. We talked about it. They needed to get some points. They needed to pick their defense up. And just a great job there by, by O'Malley executing that third and short on the rollout, the quick little play action play. And then on that rollout there at the end, a beautifully thrown football right, right past the outstretched defender and giving him enough time to catch the football and then turn up the field. Instead of hanging on for that extra half a second, he catches it and just runs out of bounds. Just a great, great drive by the Lafayette offense. And I know it's, you know, different levels of football, but the fact of the matter is you're seeing a lot of trust in an 18-year-old true freshman than what we see a, a head coach in the NFL do with his rookie quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky. Absolutely. You know, so you have to allow guys to throw the football, especially quarterbacks. That's how you get to a rhythm. Corden Brock handling the kickoff duties as well. Jay Tolliver will take it at his 10-yard line, looking to get up the middle of the field. Shakes one man, still on his feet, then finally brought down as he's just short of the 25-yard line. Yeah, now on the other side of things, on the other side of the ball for this Georgetown offense, they got to find something find something to get moving. I don't think they've gotten past the 50 today so far. And, and they just have stalled out on a lot of their drives and they just have not found a rhythm. They got to find something here and, and to help their defense out a little bit. And at least flip field position. Luke Thompson, of course, you see the defensive coordinator formerly at Georgetown from 2014 to 2016 as the D coordinator did some great work here. Also was previously at Georgetown before that, but he's back today. I had a chance to talk to him a bit before the game. Maybe a quick snap there by Georgetown. Johnson going to go deep looking for Darius, and that will be incomplete coverage on the play by Eric Mitchell as he had the better chance to catch it. 
And that was a mistake there by Johnson, a flat-out mistake. He did not read the coverage on that one. It's a golden rule of playing quarterback is you can never throw the football in the middle of the field when the middle of the field is closed. And what that means is a safety is sitting right in between those hashes. And you see it right here. He's just roaming around out there. You can't f try and fit a post in with that safety just roaming, reading his eyes the whole way. Boy, isn't there play calling system there, with those placards. I do find those entertaining. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Vallis get a gain of around one on the play, maybe one and a half. So again, a third and long coming up for the Hoyas. Yeah, but back to Luke Thompson, guys. Talked to him a bit before the game. Just asked him, hey, what's it, how's it feel to be back? And he said, yeah, it's okay, it's all right. And uh, we actually said, you know, talking to some of the Lafayette folks that say, hey, they're really uh, happy with you. And he's like, yeah, they might be overselling a little bit. I'm like, I don't think they are. When you're holding teams down and uh, what they've done in Patriot League play especially, and again, a guy like him who's been around the Patriot League, knows the offenses, knows the schemes, invaluable for this Lafayette squad. Third and eight, need to get out to the 34 for a first down. Possible offsides there, not called, and Johnson will be brought down in the backfield for a loss all the way back to the 21-yard line. And it goes back to the Lafayette defense just disguising what they're doing. That one guy just roaming around there, which gap is he gonna go into? That little, that little, honestly, that just that little movement, and yeah, they might have gotten away with an offsides there, but just that little movement by him trying to decide which gap he's going into, that changes the entire protection on the offensive line. Who's picking up what guy? And when you have that, uh, you know, that, that worry of who's coming and where, that's when you see offensive lines maybe take an extra step back right into the quarterback's grill, and you saw it on that one. Here's Hurst. Kick taken by Chenoweth, and he'll be brought down quickly. Good job by the Hoya. Special teams get down and keep him from no gain on that punt return. Nice tackle there by the Hoya gunner, Ahmad Wilson. So critical for Georgetown as Lafayette will get the ball to start the second half. Really, the defense need to find a way to step up, which they have, barring that last drive. Yeah, and this will be an interesting drive here for, for Lafayette as you see the punt here. Great job by the, the coverage unit getting down there, stopping them right away. But this will be an interesting drive for this offense. You know, we've seen them huddle up all day long. How do they handle a, a more fast-paced, up-tempo offense? Here's O'Malley. Got some space. Finds Samil. And he's going to be incomplete as he couldn't bring that one in. And Rob Scarlotta right there to help the official make that call. Receiver coaches around the nation are screaming out, catch it the first time. The ball hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it right there. That's what caused him to step out of bounds and call it incomplete. I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with that call, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely bobbled, and, and you're 100% right. He's got to catch that the first time, but I think he got that foot down. So two H backs flanking O'Malley. Simpson's your deep back. He'll take the handoff, cuts it back, stays on his feet, and bang down after a gain of two. And those big boys, Brian Jefferson, leading the way there, just coming up, doing a great job, reading the flow of the offensive line, keeping some hands free there, coming up and just making a great job, great play here. You see that defensive line for Georgetown stuffing those offensive linemen, flowing with them, and then pulling off their blocks, making a great tackle. Great job there by that front seven. I don't think Coach Scarlotta gets a ton of credit for how he's been able to recruit and develop these guys because this defense is outstanding. A lot of talent up front, a lot of young talent as well. Really right now, freshmen and sophomores across that D line that's in there now as O'Malley throws it over the middle one, almost picked off, but a flag will come in. And I believe Yankovic going to get called for a holding on the play. Yeah, I think you're right there, Emory. Uh, I, I, I think Yankovic there, might have gotten a little handsy there with that shoulder. A little bit of a tug there. Couldn't get away with it. So we'll be called on Dan Yankovic. They try to run that jerk route right there, but you get handsy as a defender. You try to save it, <laughs> but the refs caught him. So big one there is looked like the Hoyas may have had a stop and a chance at a pick from Blaze Brown. Instead, Lafayette keeps the drive alive. With just under two minutes to go in our opening half, Leopard's already leading seven to nothing, looking to move to three and one in Patriot League play this year. Handoff, 
Simpson pushes forward and breaks with the tackle of Jefferson as he lunges forward for a gain of three. You talk about right down the middle, Jefferson, Yankovic, Akiri, and Blaze Brown. That battery from defensive tackle all the way back to the safety is so strong that it it's so tough to run against these guys, and that's why they're stuffing the run. John Garrett, of course, the brother of Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett, his father, the longtime coach at Princeton, where Jason played his college football. Garrett's a football family, that's for sure. End around. And good play there by Christian Tate to bring down the receiver Pearson on what could have been a big gain, limited to just three. And, and just going back to your point there on the defense, you know, how strong they are, and we've seen it all year. This is a defense that is just loaded with talent, and they play as one defensive unit, and they are just a very, very solid defensive unit. But when you look at the numbers, they might not be there for you. And the reason for that being is a lot of games this year, that offense just has not been able to produce. And what that, hap what that does is it kind of demoralizes the defense and kind of throws them off their game. Third and two here. Lafayette has all their timeouts. They're going to look to throw, looking to go deep. Nothing there now. Mid-range check down, almost picked off as Akiri couldn't get his hands underneath of it. So now Lafayette looking at a fourth and two. They're outside of field goal range, a long two, maybe even three. Have all their timeouts left. And interesting call there as they really didn't save much more time. So even if they get the first down here, as it looks like they'll go for it, not a lot of time to work with, but on the flip side of that, as we see the replay, Hoyas don't have a lot of time if they look to go the other way. Yeah, they were expecting the Hoyas to be in an all-out pressure situation there. They went max protect. The Hoyas played coverage and had that bottled up on the back end. Yeah, and it just shows you, again, the, the fearlessness of O'Malley's just trying to stick that one in there and hopefully get his guy to make a play. Here comes the blitz. O'Malley over the middle, and it will be knocked away by Akiri looking for the pick, but probably a smart play anyway as now the Hoyas with good field position after the Akiri pass breakup. Yeah, great job there by Akiri coming in, making a play on that ball. But that was actually the right read for O'Malley. He was just a little bit late with the football. He had that bender route outside of the hash. If you have a middle of the field safety, that's the route you want to expose, that, that route down the field right on that hash mark, but you have to be on time, especially with a guy like David Akiri back there roaming around by himself. If you're any bit late with that football, like you saw there, he's gonna make a play on it. Do you want that ball to be low in, in that situation? Or you no? want it to be low, you want it to be a little bit on his outside shoulder, but you, ultimately you just have to be on time with that football and stick it right on him. So Hoyas with a chance here. Let's see what they do. Gonna run the option, pitching it out to Vallis will be hit and brought down. And a flag goes down as it looks like they'll get Lafayette for hitting Johnson well after he pitched the ball. 315 yards they're gonna give. The Hoy is right there, just an undisciplined play by Lafayette. Yeah, I know I'm a former quarterback, but I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of those plays, especially with the option that, what do you expect it's tough, to do? Right, it's tough, right, it's tough to do. For Maybe. me personally, even as a former quarterback, when you run that option there, you know, you run the option, you're basically making the quarterback a running back. And you can't try and, and, and give him those protection rules because if he tries to do a fake pitch and you let up because you think he's pitching the football, well, now you're done. So it's one of those tough plays, and, and it's, you know, obviously one thing college football is trying to do is protect the quarterbacks, and you see it in the NFL too, but um, I'm not a huge fan of, of that particular call. So Ryan Barnett picked up the flag, but now... All but one of the officials is over conferencing here. Don't know exactly what they're chatting about. So Rob Scarlotta now pointing to the spot, whatever explanation he's got and he's fine with. But the bigger point of this is that that 15-yard penalty now makes this an option for the Hoyas one or two completions there in field goal range. Yeah, I think that's got to be the goal right now. You have a good kicker in Brad Hurst, this kid who can make a 50, you know, 45, 50 yard field goal. You get one or two completions here. You still got a timeout. You still got some time, especially in the college game. 20 seconds is a long time. So you've got to try and get within that 20 to 30 yard range and give your kicker a chance to get some points. So Johnson in the shotgun. Looking over the middle is going to find Vallis. Vallis will get out of bounds, but another flag down on the play. 
And just when you think, you know, they got a little something going, it looks like it's going to be a hold here on this Georgetown offense. And that was the perfect play call. That little halfback delay coming out of the backfield was wide open. And you see the frustration there by Darius. You know, it's just one of those things that they get a good play going. You know, like you said, just a perfect play call, that little halfback delay, give him some room. And it's just one of those things that as an offense, you just get so frustrated, especially, you know, as an offense, but also as a team, that frustration just starts to kick in. You, you know, you get that 15-yard penalty, and now you're back 10 yards because of a, you know, because of a holding call. Dom Scarangella with that holding call. Hoyas still have all their timeouts. They can work the middle of the field. This one thrown up as Jessen looking for it, but it's underthrown on the hit on the play. And grabbing that one, Eric Mitchell for the interception will snuff out the Hoyas chance. And maybe Lafayette takes a shot down the field here with their timeouts remaining. Yeah, and I think that was big number 98, Demetrius Breedlove. We'll see on the, yep, 98, Breedlove coming in. Beautiful swim, swim move on the offensive lineman. Got in there free. Johnson had no idea, blindside hit, threw the ball up. Obviously, that hit jarred the ball, made it float a little bit, and a uh, big play by the Lafayette defense. Now with nine seconds left, you wonder what they do. Do they maybe try and get one play down the field? It'll, uh, you know, these end of the half plays are always something <laughs> that, that just interests me depending on, you know, what option they take. So again, Lafayette, nine seconds to go. Full complement of timeouts, likely can only use one. O'Malley's got two receivers each way, all bunched together. Looks out in the flat as he finds Wadsworth for a four-yard completion. Might be gearing up for the Hail Mary shot. I don't know what kind of arm strength O'Malley has, but this would be a long one. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> this would be a long throw. Conferencing with head coach John Garrett as O'Malley goes back out. Let's see where they go. Hoyas. Drop three back, and corners drop back as well. Georgetown, interesting formation. Three pass rushers to one side. O'Malley again works the outside, and again they'll get it up to the 50, so maybe that's what they were thinking was, hey, let's get up a little bit, chance for one more. But again, guys, let's ask you, Mike, you're the quarterback. You wonder maybe they just worked the field since you had the timeouts left. Yeah, I, I it's it's tough honestly it's one of those things that you know what are you trying to do with that nine seconds you come out with a game plan do you try and maybe their game plan was get to the 50 and we think o'malley has a shot um i did see him in pre-game warm-ups you know standing there making throws from the 50 pretty close to the goal line so maybe with a little bit of momentum moving forward um he can make that throw and get it down there um so we'll see if they you know they go for the hail mary here on this last play have some height let's see if he has time he's got to get out of the way Duval Paul chasing him. He throws it out of bounds, and this is going to end up with the cheerleaders and actually a little collision there. Looks like the cheerleader okay, and that's good news as the Hoya defense stands up there and keeps it a 7-0 game at the half. Lafayette getting that one touchdown pass after a few Hoya stands, and they have the seven-point lead as we head to the half. Lafayette up on Georgetown, 7-zip. You're watching it right here on the Patriot League Network on Stadium.
you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan, you want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up, shop.guhoyas.com. You'll find an awesome selection of Georgetown items, including jerseys, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, office, or even your car with the best selection of Hoyas gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan. Head to shop.guhoyas.com. And welcome back to Georgetown as Lafayette with a 7-0 lead here at the half. Jeremy Huber, Michael Niebrick, Emery Hunt, and guys, again, this a low-scoring game. I think what we kind of expected, considering what we've seen these teams play as of late, again, Lafayette maybe not getting as much as they wanted on offense, but the Georgetown defense really stepping up when need be. Yeah, their defense has definitely risen to the occasion. They need their offense to step up as well. 0 for 5 on third downs in that first half. Yeah, I think it, it's it's one of those games that's kind of what we expected. You know, both offenses have been struggling all year. Both defenses have been playing pretty well, and that's what we're seeing out, out here today. Neither offense has made a play to really spark anything and get some big momentum going on offense. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first half highlights in this one. And again, uh, a lot of big plays when it comes to things that maybe ended up outside of the uh, outside, didn't end up making a big thing in the game. But again, we saw early on, this guy has been big for this uh, Lafayette team, uh, going making some big plays as Will Eisler, of course, had a big one later on in the half. But again, we see Wadsworth and going to him as well. Yeah, and I think Lafayette's offense has done some nice things today. They found, they've done a nice job spreading Georgetown's defense out horizontally, which has opened up some lanes. But ultimately, it's, you know, Georgetown's playing that bend, don't break defense. And when they get down there and you see plays like this, you know, we see Shane O'Ma or Sean O'Malley coming up and making a big play. You know, a risky play, but he's making plays. But that Georgetown coming up and making plays when they need to. Yeah, I love the fact that their defense has tightened up inside the red zone. Their offense has had some moments, but penalties and drop passes really curtail overall success. Boy, is still struggling to get the run game going except for this, where Gunther Johnson got those legs moving. Yeah, and that's something that I want to see Gunther Johnson do more. Opportunity ball. He also needs to be a little bit better on his timing routes to those outside throws, give Darius a chance on that play to get up the field. Malley, again, kind of working short. We would see the Hoyas here. This was a free play, and as Mike, you said, kind of throw it up for grabs, though it ended up being a touchdown that came back on a penalty. Yeah, it was a smart play by Johnson. He knew he had the free play. He knew he had a guy going deep down the sideline. Throw it up, give your guy a chance. If he gets returned, who cares? Doesn't matter. And here was the controversial play. The pitch to Thomas, clearly backwards, was ruled forward as the ref a little bit out of position, called back after a little conference. Yeah, one thing you notice about Lafayette in that first half, their secondary does not drop opportunity to pick the ball off. See that big hitting Hoya defense there trying to limit the plays. But again, this would be the big call, the fourth down pass, finding the H back out in the fly. Yeah, and I think Coach Garris done a great job today calling plays offensively. Right when you think they're going to load the box, run the ball down their throat, he, he puts a little uh, play action pass there in the sideline and uh, gets the first down. And then O'Malley comes out here, beautiful throw right in stride with his wide receiver, and his guy gets in there and makes a play. Probably stepped out of bounds, but again, goes back to that play before with the with the backward pass, and uh, you know, karmically, I think it all evens out. Nick Pearson on that 11-yard touchdown grab. Hoy is trying to get some things going. Again, could not do it. We see, again, this Lafayette uh, offense try to get something going before the half. Hoy is doing a good job to shut them down and not let them uh, get another score as Lafayette will get the second half kickoff. Very big for the Hoyas to keep this a one possession game. Of course, Georgetown trying to maybe get a last second field goal. Again, the Lafayette defense steps up. Emory gets that pick there. And that's what you want to see a team close off the first half with a great defensive play. That momentum carries into halftime and hopefully carries out of halftime to start the third quarter. Eric Mitchell with that pick. And we look at the stats, guys. And again, Lafayette kind of getting going a little bit. The rushing yards, especially considering where they've come from, averaging 20 a game, at least over that, and the passing yards as well. Georgetown, again, just struggling. And Emory, you pointed out, third down conversions key for the Hoyas. To me, that's the big difference in this game. Two com conversions on third down by Lafayette led to them scoring their only touchdown in this ball game. If Georgetown can at least flip the field uh, defensively, I think they can shut down Lafayette's offense. 
Uh, honestly, to me, the biggest thing that stands out there is 44 yards of total offense in the first half. You see here, Gunther Johnson, three for 12 for 17 yards. I mean, as a college offense, that's just honestly, it's unacceptable to have 44 yards in, in a half, you know, especially against a team like, like, Laf uh, like Lafayette that has struggled. You know, this is a defense that's playing well today, but it's a defense that's struggled a lot this year. Um, so they have to go into halftime right now, and hopefully they're trying to come up with some new scheme out there that can get them going and honestly, just start moving the football. Don't worry about third down. Don't worry about putting the points. Just worry about getting yards at this point, and things will kind of follow from there. And a bit of a tough ask, of course, playing against your former coordinator, Luke Thompson, very familiar with the Hoya personnel. We'll see if Georgetown can find some answers in the second half. Halftime continues from the hilltop. Lafayette leading Georgetown 7 0. You're watching it on the Patriot League Network on Stadium. you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan, you want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up, shop.guhoyas.com. You'll find an awesome selection of Georgetown items, including jerseys, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, office, or even your car with the best selection of Hoyas gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan. Head to shop.guhoyas.com. Welcome back to our nation's capital. Lafayette holding a 7-0 lead on Georgetown at the half. Hoyas looking for their first Patriot League win of the season. Lafayette looking to move to 3-1 in the PL. Let's look at our Patriot League standings. And again, the Leopards, only two wins on the season. Of course, the preseason poll first. And you see where people were expected to be. Lehigh kind of the overwhelming favorite with Fordham at number two. Colgate, Holy Cross, and of course, Bucknell afterwards. Georgetown and Lafayette bringing up the rear in that tie for six. But when you look at what's going on now, Colgate kind of maybe the favorite as we move forward, though even they with some interesting tiebreakers not on their side. Lafayette still in this thing, and actually if they went out very well, could be your Patriot League champ. 
I think when you look at Colgate, I love what they do. They had that game against Richmond won, and they lost in the last minute. So they're a good football team. They're playing a freshman quarterback in Grant Brenneman, whose brother is the tight end for UMass, Adam Brenneman. So they're getting great play from their freshman quarterback. So is Lafayette right now, which is why both teams are high in the standings. Yeah, and honestly, looking at this, it shows you how, how much you know preseason polls are worth. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you look like coming in. It's all about what you do within those, you know, those grueling days of the season, week four, five, and six. You know, you get start to get banged up. That's where you start to see these, you know, these these numbers start to slide, especially with a team like Fordham, who has just suffered a, so many injuries throughout the season. But you start to see them start to get healthy. Lehigh's healthy. Colgate's healthy. Lafayette, for the most part, is pretty healthy. This is that final stretch of the season that's going to determine who wins the Patriot League. And, of course, you look at those two teams in Fordham and Holy Cross, as you mentioned, banged up teams, but they have guys who can be considered some of the best players in the Patriot League. Puyols for the Crusaders. Of course, Fordham with their duo. Edmonds up there plus a the quarterback spot. So, again, you look at some teams that, if not even – contend for the title can play spoiler late in the season no easy outs in the Patriot League always uh, a tough tough slog to get through we'll see who ends up at the top of the standings when it's all said and done well an interesting program here today of course it is a military appreciation day but also a program called soldiers to sidelines where really helping military men get involved when it comes to the coaching on the gridiron our Yosef Nasser had a chance to catch up with the guy who is really in front of that the program Harrison Bernstein assistant for the Georgetown Hoyas again Yosef caught up with him earlier today Harrison uh, as the executive director of uh, Soldiers to Sidelines for viewers at home who may not be familiar with the organization what can you tell us yeah Soldiers to Sidelines is a 501c3 charitable organization and ultimately what we do is educate certify and find jobs in coaching for military personnel active duty retired and veterans now, Harrison, you've certified 40 soldier coaches to this point. What's the vision for growth of the organization moving forward? Uh, you know, pardon the pun, but really we want to create an army of coaches throughout the nation, really improving the quality of youth coaching everywhere and ultimately in all sports. I mean, right now we work with football and lacrosse primarily, but the vision is to grow this to all sports and really have a strong influence teaching the characteristics that the military embody in terms of teamwork, leadership, work ethic, organization, and really improving the experience for youth athletes all over the country. Well, Harrison, I appreciate the pun. Final question, where can fans learn more about Soldiers to Sidelines? Oh, yeah, just visit uh, SoldiersToSidelines.com and you can hear stories of all the alumni who have come through the organization, uh, how it's affected their lives. Uh, you can learn how to donate at that website as well. We're collecting donations here um, today at uh, Cooper Field. And, it, yeah, all the information is at SoldiersToSidelines.com. And, uh, yeah, please help these guys find their renewed sense of purpose back in civilian life. Harrison Bernstein, thanks for the time. Jeremy, back to you. Thank you, guys. And, of course, here's more on Soldiers to Sidelines, nonprofit organization on branches of the military and 40 certified soldier coaches in the D.C. area right now but looking to expand it out. And, of course, you guys have played a lot of football in your lives. We'll start with you, Mike. Uh, what would be kind of playing for a, a military guy? Obviously some things that really tie together when it comes to the military and football. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, you know, right off the bat that you think about is the discipline. The discipline that's needed in the military and the discipline that's needed in football you know it's one of those things that that just kind of connect the two and and um you know i know a lot of military coaches out there a lot of you know military background coaches they just instill that discipline in that in their players and it's something that you don't only take onto the field with you but you take it in life and you, you just see those guys who play under coaches like that that are just so disciplined in everything that they do and they, you know, it just kind of, it, it spreads around them. And it's it's a very special thing to have, you know, a lot of the, the military members here today. And I know it means a lot to the players out there as well. Yeah, my, my high school coach was a, a mil former military guy. And he was, he thrived on putting us in situational football. You know, as far as like everything was about how can you win this situation? Maybe it's 11 on 12 or, you know, 10 on 9, something like that. It was always about the situation with him. And it helped prep you to, to uh, play well in games when you face that adversity. So, again, a good program set up by Ahoy assistant Harrison Bernstein, soldiers to sidelines. Of course, uh, glad to have him talking about it today and glad to be here as it's homecoming on the hilltop. Georgetown trailing Lafayette 7 to nothing. 
We'll have more of this matchup coming up in just a bit. You're watching on the Patriot League Network on WatchStadium.com. Back in Washington, D.C., Lafayette with a 7 to nothing lead on Georgetown at the half. As the Hoyas, again, looking for that first conference win on homecoming. Lafayette looking to stay in contention in the Patriot League as they are currently tied in the loss column for first place. Let's look at a former Georgetown standout, Nick Alfieri. Of course, a big-time guy here on the Hilltop. In the middle, play that middle linebacker spot for the Hoyas. Again, you look at some of the accomplishments for him, obviously, when it comes to his play with all Patriot League first team, but also the recipient of the Joe Akabachi number 35 Memorial jersey in 2014. Well, Nick's been doing some interesting things across the pond, playing for the Schwabish Hall Unicorns as they just won the German League championship. Again, look at some good stats there, but also keeping alive his passion for filmmaking as he's done a documentary about his time playing over in the German League. Again, Alfieri, a guy who went to UFC Film School, decided that it wasn't for him, decided to go back and play a little bit of football over in Germany. And again, one of those Georgetown guys doing amazing things. And uh, I don't know about you guys ever getting nibbles from foreign football leagues? I actually did, yeah. After um, uh, after graduation, you start to get you know some phone calls. Honestly, the, the funny part is you start to get a lot of, of Facebook messages. Um, <laughs> that's that's a lot of the ways that they you know they reach out to you, especially you know if they're living in Germany, they're not going to call you. Right. Um, so they reached out through Facebook, but you know I remember playing Nick when when I was at Fordham. This is this was a, a very good player. He was a you know a very smart football player, and and it's it's awesome to see what he's doing over in Germany right now. Just um, you know, not only playing ball and continuing his dream there, but being able to you know kind of pursue his his filmmaking career as well. So you know, it's it's always good to see guys like this you know find some success. Maybe not in what they think, but in in different alleys. My former college teammate coaches in Germany mm -hmm. and met his wife there and has a kid. He still lives out there, so he, he coached at Lubeck, the Cougars out there in the GFL. So <laughs> <laughs> very familiar with the GFL and the type of talent they produce is we saw Moritz Warringer get drafted by the Minnesota yeah. Vikings. So there's a lot of talent out a there. Lot there's of a talent. lot of talent across the pond and, and and you know guys just playing in different leagues, just looking for that one opportunity to showcase their skills and then they get picked up elsewhere. It's all about just continuing to play while you are physically able to, man. That's the one thing you don't get with football that you get with every other every other sport. So Georgetown will receive the second half kickoff. Again, Jay Tolliver will take it, this time just outside his 10 yard line, trying to get back up into the middle. And he will not. Again, good kick coverage by Lafayette. So again, Hoyas field position not been on their side so far today. I know it's been a running story all broadcast long, but if their offense can just 
flip the field position. Lafayette has had favorable down and distance uh, and starting points in this ball game. Their offense has to get at least three first downs on this series for me to consider it successful. A rough day so far for the Hoyas offensively, but only down seven to nothing. Touchdown will tie the game up. Here's Jessen. And that Lafayette defense right there to hold him for no gain. And that was like a pseudo run play. Nice, easy, quick throw to get their receiver involved, get those guys some touches, and hopefully they can make one miss. Guys, the sun has gone behind the clouds, and it's downright chilly now. It's a beautiful fall day, Jeremy. <laughs> beautiful fall day. <laughs> You played, your high, you played your college ball in New York. I didn't do <laughs> such a thing. Darius in motion. Rush coming, but Johnson gets out of it, and he's going to get positive yardage short of the sticks, but he does take it out to the 31-yard line, almost the 32. So now a third and short for Georgetown. Yeah, and that's the kind of stuff that, that Gunther Johnson can do. He can feel that pressure coming from his blind, blind side. Great job with that twist getting some positive yardage i just would like to see him do a little bit more of that it almost feels like he's trying to force himself to stay in the pocket sometimes he just needs to let himself out a little bit create some plays with his legs and the, that pass game will open up I just play ball man dealing with some injuries maybe that's part of the reasoning as Vallis up the middle and he is met by a wall of defenders from lafayette hoyas just can't get it going on the ground that was tony jadis the Syracuse transfer and the Hoyas go three and out again. And they can't get anything going on the ground because let's be honest here, Lafayette's off defense just does not respect the pass game of Georgetown. They have four completions on the day for very minimal yardage. If you're Lafayette's defense, you're playing the run. You're asking Georgetown to beat you throwing the football and right now they've proven that they can't do that as of, as of this point in the game. So again, punted away by Hurst, Chenoweth, on the run, makes the grab, and he'll be pushed out of bounds just short of the 40-yard line. So again, theme all day, good field position for Lafayette to start this drive. And we're going to see if they're going to come out just like they did in that first quarter where you saw multiple formations, multiple motions, multiple shifts, and they really had that Hoya defense off balance, and that's when they had their best output offensively. So we'll see if they hit the reset button and try to get back to the future, so to speak, in the second half. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they got away from that in the second quarter there. And the first quarter was where they were really having a lot of their success. We'll see if they can do that here. But you also got to think Georgetown's defense made some adjustments at halftime. First and 10 here for Lafayette. And Leopards in the white today, Georgetown in the navy blue. Simpson getting to the outside, has got some space, says he'll be pushed out of bounds near the 45-yard line. And we saw this earlier in the game with, with O'Malley coming up to the line and making a check at the line of scrimmage there. You could hear him say, alert, alert, alert. And what that usually means when you're under center like that with the run game is you have the run play going one way. If you see the defense lined up to the side that you're going to run the football, you say, alert, alert, alert. And it tells your entire offense, okay, we're flipping the play. Now it's going to the left. So on that particular play, they probably had a run coming to the right. They saw the defense overloaded, shifted to the left, and got seven yards out of it. Mrazic and Palumbo, again, your receivers. Eisler, the H back, had that big catch to set up the Lafayette touchdown and pushing forward and across the sticks goes Brown for a first down. Yeah, they're just winning one-on-one -on -one at the point of attack on this series with their Brown game. It's nothing fancy, it's just an outside stretch, just trying to beat you to the spot, and they're doing so. Offensive line has really stepped up so far in this opening series for Lafayette because they were getting mauled a bit <laughs> by that Hoya defensive line. So first and 10, backs flanking O'Malley. Still hand off and Brown trying to get to the outside and a good job there coming up from the secondary. That time Ahmad Wilson coming in to stymie that play. A few other Hoyas get in there to make the tackle as well. Yeah. yeah. 
He, I'm sorry, Mike. But yeah, I mean, we, we talk about it all the time, the secondary. I mean, coming up and making plays. You know, these guys just know how to flow to the football. Coming up, making plays. Great job by the, the front seven there, pursuing as the offensive line drew the play out there. And, uh, and, and, you know, we see plays like that all the time from this Georgetown defense, and that's why they're a good defense. Wilson, Wilson another guy out of the Steel City. So a two-yard loss in the play. Need to get to the Georgetown 41 for a first down. O'Malley throws it out in the flat. He's going to find his tight end. He'll be brought down across the original line of scrimmage. Taggart and see will be about seven yards short of that first down. Jake Taggart, the freshman tight end. Of course, he'll get a lot of playing time with Dylan Wadsworth set to move on at the end of the year. Yeah, he was expected to get blown up right there, but good job making the defender miss in space. And these are the type of plays, these are the type of situations you want to see Georgetown win right now. Third and about, I will call this third and long, but you have a true freshman quarterback that's not afraid to make plays downfield. O'Malley again out in the flat. Good snag by Emil, and he will be stopped. And the Hoya defense cleaning him up. A few guys getting on that. Play again, Wilson in on it, but a few others. Blaze Brown up there as well. As they will hold up that Lafayette defense. And again, just another bend, don't break here by this Georgetown defense. You know, they had good foot field position to start it off. You felt a little bit of momentum starting a game by the Leopard offense. Georgetown comes up, makes a couple of really nice plays in a row, forces a punt here. And hopefully, uh, you know, if you're Lafayette, you can pin them deep here again like you did uh, earlier in the game. Here's Turk. Again, nice kick. Brown's going to let it bounce. And it will take a fantastic checkup by Lafayette. That thing got down to the one-yard line and came back. But again, Georgetown will start inside their own five-yard line. And Turk is a freshman as well. So they're getting a lot of production from freshmen on this football team. It makes you want to project forward to how good they're going to be down the line. So getting that production by these guys and having a legit weapon as your punter it just makes your defense that much better. Look at this kick, guys. It almost hits one of the Georgetown blockers. Then just does a U-turn at about the two-yard line. Keeps it out of the end zone. And it's one of those things that, you know, when you're facing an offense that's struggling, plays like that are, are just so much bigger than people think. Man in motion, that's Williams. Throw out in the flat. He'll make the grab, cuts it up. Knocked out of bounds near the stick, so gain of eight for the freshman receiver. Yeah, I thought he kind of missed Michael Darris on that spot route right there, but found the open guy in the flat and was able to pick up positive yards. The Hoyas trying to go very fast on the tempo. Thomas hits and stopped, but he's able to lunge forward and get a gain of three for the first down. All right, so now you got one first down. That's the that's the number one goal when you're backed like up, up like that is get one first down. Now you got that first down. Now you, now you feel a, a momentum going. This was one thing when I was playing where once we got that first down, we almost knew we were going to score. It was just something something that happens when you get that first down. You get out of backed up like that. You just kind of feel good about yourselves. You get that momentum rolling. The Johnson checks over and part of you wonders. Trying to go maybe fast to tire out that front from Lafayette as Johnson back to throw. Again, it'll be hit and brought down, so it kind of backfires on the Hoyas. But back to that point, Mike, when you have a team that is constantly rolling guys through, can it be a factor if you can go ahead and go hurry up and keep those substitutions from coming out on the field? I think so. I think if you can keep them from subbing out, absolutely. But when you have an off uh, a defense like this that is so deep, and you mentioned it earlier in the game, you know this is a, a defense and really a front seven that runs about ten deep, and, and they just keep subbing guys in and out. Unless you're feeling good about yourselves and you have an established rhythm, going fast is counterproductive for the offense. Second and long here again. Issues in the backfield, and Johnson's just going to get what he can as he goes forward for two. Emery, let's get back to that Lafayette front. We talk about how deep they are. Some pretty good prospects up there, correct? Yeah. When you look at their defensive line, Bo Bosch is a guy that is playing well from the neck up, and he has what the the league look for looks for in that length and that that uh, the ability to play with length because you could have it and not play with it. You could be tall and play small, but he does a good job in just reading things. He's causing a lot of problems up front for this, deep, for this offensive line. Of course, Tony Judice as well, some fifth 
year seniors in Matt Rothrock and Andy Lobedev. Really experienced, also some youth. Little pressure coming. Johnson going over the middle. This will be picked off. Looking for Williams, but instead making the grab. Rob Hinchin puts the Lafayette offense in a good spot. Yeah, you, you have. I've seen quarterbacks do this at the pro level, too. Uh, you underestimate the defender's athleticism. Just because they play linebacker, may, have wear, may be wearing a 50 number, don't think he can't jump and be athletic to make a play. And that is also just a bad throw. Yeah, I think it's just it's a bad decision, and, and I think he, he just wasn't seeing the depth that the linebacker was getting. And, and, you know, when you can't see and you can't feel the amount of depth that they're getting, you almost feel like you can just inevitably put the ball over their head. But if they're getting depth and they're running with that wide receiver exactly like he did on that play, it's impossible to get the ball over top. First pick of the year for Gunther Johnson. Here's Chenoweth on the end around. And again, Owen Kessler's there on the spot. Also a few others to clean it up. But a good play by the Hoya defensive end. Yeah, one thing to keep an eye on um, as we feel the temperature drop here on the field, I think we may see rain in the fourth quarter. So um, it'll be interesting to see what, what that does to alter the play calling. And Lafayette can get another score here. Could be tough sledding for a Hoya offense already struggling. Second and eight. Power pistol here as Zamil is your deep back. Taggart going in motion. Emil will get it. Cuts it back. He's got some space. Has the first down. And he'll be dragged down. But again, good lower body lean to get some extra yardage all the way down to the 17. Yeah, C.J. Emil running like the junior that he is. I mean, this is, this is a guy who's played a lot of football in his career. And, you know, just the cuts that he's making today are phenomenal. Watching him make these cuts in the backfield, you see him there making that one cut, boom, saw his lean, got up field. He's not a guy in the backfield who's going to try and be too shifty. He's going to make the one cut and cut up the field and get as many yards as he can. He's doing a great job of it today. Emil remains in the backfield. It's Lafayette. Looks to add on to this 7-0 lead. Emil, this time running to his right, trying to get to the outside. Yankovic brings him down. Emil looking for a face mask call, but referee says no. Yankovic has played a phenomenal game, talking about sideline to sideline speed, and that's tough to do against a guy like Emil that can beat you to the spot. But we've seen Yankovic do a great job of this all game long, just accelerating to the ball carrier, taking great angles to the football. I've been very impressed. And I think you mentioned it earlier in the game, how athletic this front seven is. Regardless of the secondary, this front seven is so athletic. We've seen over the last couple of years, it is extremely difficult to get outside on this Georgetown defense. Boy, is show blitz for a second. We'll see if they still come. Emil still in the backfield. O'Malley under pressure is going to get out of it. He will lunge forward, ends up getting positive yardage, but brought down as Jefferson makes the big tackle. Nice delay pressure right there by Georgetown, sort of baiting O'Malley in. They, they brought it, but he was able to step up and, and make something to happen, make something out of nothing, but just good job defensively on the back end with coverage, but their front seven caused a lot of problems with that delayed blitz. Brian Jefferson with that play. Jefferson kind of the old man of that front, fifth year senior <laughs> out of Vienna, that. Virginia. <laughs> Well, you look at so many young guys playing oh, around yeah. him. Absolutely. Kendall catching out there as well, but most of the others, either freshmen or sophomores. Third and seven. Lafayette again going to hand it off. Emil trying to get outside. Yankovic does a good job to not horse collar him, but still bring him down after a gain of just two. Yeah, this big Dan Yankovic again just coming up, making a play, flying through the gap. Finding the, you know, the, and you mentioned to Jeremy, not doing a really nice job at not grabbing that jersey. He had an opportunity there to grab that jersey a little bit out of his reach. He stalled himself and came up with a nice tackle. But, Jeremy, you mentioned it earlier, you know, with, with Jefferson being, you know, the, the old man of that defensive line. If you look at the entire second string right now in the defensive line, all freshmen, four <laughs> freshmen. So this is a deep defensive line in terms of, of skill, maybe not so much experience, but Jefferson leads the way up front. Here's Corden Brock looking to make it a 10-point game. Will he do it? He will not. So Lafayette again goes a little conservative, trying to get a two-score lead. It backfires as Corden Brock can't find the range. A lot shorter field goal that time, so the Hoy is catching breaks today, staying in this game. And if college football had fantasy football and you didn't take Georgetown's defense and special teams in this game, 
You know, <laughs> what a what a great effort they're doing right there and holding points away. Let's check in with our Yosef Nasser. I asked Coach Scarlotta how he's managed to keep morale high in the locker room. He really credited his leadership of the team, uh, especially the efforts from the two honorees, the two recipients of the Joe Ekabachi number 35 memorial jersey, David Akiri and Tim Barnes. He said those guys have done a great job since the preseason of welcoming a deep freshman class. Over 27 freshmen have joined the team in the offseason. He said that this team is better than its record. He said that we've been in all of our games. We just have to play more consistently. At the end of the day, he said the leadership council has done a great job of keeping morale high in the locker room. We'll see if they can come through with a win here today. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Joseph. So the catch by Thomas sets up a second. We'll call it four. Isaac Ellsworth into the game. McLaughlin makes the grab, cuts it up, and lunges forward, and he'll be close to the first down. Believe he will have it. They will push it along. So, guys, I believe this is the first time we've seen Ellsworth today when it comes to offensively. You usually see him as the change of pace guy. Emery, what can he bring to the lineup? A, a little bit more juice seems to be coming out offensively from him because he has a little bit of those quicks that you want to see. I think that helps out their offense play a little bit more fast. And there's Ellsworth. There's the speed we were talking about brought down from behind and just getting to the side of the pads was the corner Jerry Poe, the linebacker, excuse me. But he stops Ellsworth before a huge game. And that's what I was just talking about. You want to go with your guys that give you the best chance to, to create offense. And he is definitely one of those players right now. Same formation, Ellsworth up the middle, and this time he's hit in the backfield and brought down for a minimal loss. And it's one thing to have a guy like that in Ellsworth. You know, you have a big play like that. Georgetown needs to be careful, and we've seen this a lot throughout the years. They need to be careful at, 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 you know, letting the fountain run dry, honestly, and going to it too many times, too many times in a row. You know, that was a great opportunity there. You just had a big run, maybe throw a pass down the field. Maybe you get to catch the defense sleeping. Instead, they go to a run play and lose some yards. Now you're behind the sticks on second down. One deep safety as Johnson rolls out, finds Darius in the flat. Flag will go down. This may be offensive pass interference. And it looks like it's going to be on Edwards. Looked like maybe he ran into the wide receiver, but instead of the accidental run into that you see a lot <laughs> these days, it looked like a pretty blatant block. Edwards pleading his case. It's Max Edwards. So another possible drive killer. And yeah, that's, ooh, that's another one where it looked like it's just as much contact Lafayette delivering the blow as Edwards. And it's one of those tricky rules in football that it's, it's like, who's responsible to get out of the way? Right. There's no real established rule. It's kind of a feel thing if you're the referee. And on that particular case, it, the referee felt like Edwards maybe put his shoulder in a little bit more than the defender did. Again, Ellsworth on a draw as he'll get about five yards, but set up a third and long. Boy is on the day. Again, 88 total yards. Of course, Lafayette, they've only been held to 167, so. Yeah, this Georgetown defense, keeping them in the game for sure. Johnson on the option, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, actually just about a yard short, so it makes it a little better field position for the punt. As Brad Hurst will look to pin that Lafayette offense deep, but again, he'll be out there to kick it away. But this is what we're talking about. This is how you flip field position. Your defense got a little bit of rest. Maybe they come out on this defensive series and be a little bit more aggressive against Lafayette, but this is what you wanted to see their offense do in the first half. Now maybe they can come out defensively, get a quick stop, and be right back out there offensively. Low snap. 
Hurst gets it on the hop, though, and gets off a good kick. Chenoweth going to let it go, and it will take a Hoya bounce as it will be stopped by Denove. They'll mark it down out around the nine-yard line, but that's still pretty good as Hurst able to pin Lafayette back deep and maybe set up the Hoya defense. Yeah, and, and you said it perfectly, Emery. When you have an offense that's struggling like this for Georgetown, you have to be able to pin, you have to be able to flip the field, and, and you mentioned that. If you can flip the field exactly like you're doing right now, you have a defense out here who has played a pretty good football game. They've given up a couple of long drives, but ultimately they've only given up seven points in this game, and they have the ability to do a quick three and out. If they can get a quick three and out right here, now you give your offense good field position, and it doesn't take too many plays. It's not a long field drive to get some points. Hand off to Simpson, running to the outside. Almost brought down in the backfield, ends up getting back to the line of scrimmage, but he will get no more, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. Lafayette still leading 7 to nothing over Georgetown. More action coming up here on the Patriot League Network on Stadium. Georgetown Hoyas fan. You want the world to know it, and there's only one place for you to gear up, shop.guhoyas.com. You'll find an awesome selection of Georgetown items, including jerseys, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, office, or even your car with the best selection of Hoyas gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan. Head to shop.guhoyas.com. Welcome back to our nation's capital. Start of the fourth quarter, Lafayette with a 7-0 lead. Emil hit and brought down Bowers and Yankovic. They've been there all day, again, combining on a tackle. You know who made that play? Ramon Lyons on the outside. You saw him do a spin, almost sacrifice contained, but was able to get right back in position and force the running back to bounce it inside to where his help was. Yeah, I think he knew that he was close enough to the sidelines where had he not made that spin move, he tried to bounce outside of him. Ultimately, he wasn't getting too far. But a great job there, Lions, and just the athleticism of making that spin move and then getting your head turned around and getting it in the right position. Phenomenal job there by Lions and a great job there by the defense. So another huge play here. Lafayette, will they play conservative? O'Malley over the middle, and it will be incomplete. It's picked off as Williamson Behind the ladder, but Georgetown forces the three and out. Yeah, Jelani Williamson baited him there, and we've seen this all year, and it's one of the things I've been so impressed with him on is being able to play that out route with the corner route coming behind him. You see it here. It's a, This is the play previously on the defense, but you saw it there by Jelani Williamson. Being able to play both routes is extremely, extremely frustrating for a quarterback because you think you can fit it in behind him, but a kid that's that athletic is going to make a play on the ball every single time. Here's Turk. Hoya setting up the return. End over end kick. Darius is going to have to let it bounce. It takes a left turn out of bounds, and the Hoyas will be set up in great field position, trailing by just seven. And Emory, you called it out. This is what you want right now if you're Coach Scarlotta. Now you have a short field. And now you, have, you also have the benefit of, of having a great field goal kicker that can get you some points. And again, you're only down seven, but it's all about chipping away at the at the scoreboard and almost got that interception, but a great play defensively by Kingsley Wimba on the edge because he beat two blocks to really force O'Malley to throw that football where he didn't want to go to. This Lafayette squad 
Econ, their big major, 46 players. Of course, government and law are the next closest. <laughs> Some smart kids the out smart there. Kids. <laughs> 46. Up the middle goes Thomas. Gain of four, close to five on the play, so a good start for that Georgetown offensive line. And if you're Coach Scarlatta, you feel good right now because we mentioned earlier you don't need too many plays to get into Brad Hurst's field goal range. You just need maybe another 15, 20 yards, and now you give yourself an opportunity for three points. Now you get three to seven. You slowly chip your way at, you know, at, this, at this score here, um, but ultimately it's a short field, and when you have a struggling offense, a short field is your best friend. Again, Johnson with that clap. Does a few times. Out in the flat. Slay is going to make the catch. It was behind him, and he's right at the sticks as he gets knocked back. So third and five as the Hoyas could use a first down here. Slay is one guy that I think they should try to get involved in the offense. He's a former quarterback, now moved to tight end, but he's very athletic. He's that off tight end that they can move around and take some of the pressure off the receiver. So I would like to see them get him more involved in the ball game. Again, man move, flag goes up. Johnson has a free play. He's gonna try and throw down the field, now just throws it away. And it was interesting as it was the near official that called the offsides, but it was a player for Lafayette on the far side of the field. Yeah, it was a close one whether he crossed into that neutral zone or not, but ultimately they're gonna get that five yards and a first down. So that's huge. Now, yeah, I don't know if he crossed in, but we've seen some questionable calls today <laughs> for sure, and another one that goes Georgetown's way, and, and it, it's a good thing that that it did because you know that was a had they not called it, that's an errant snap, third down on that play. Now you got fourth down, got to punt the football away. So big break for Georgetown there. So again, Hoyas benefit of that. Penalty on Lafayette, keeps the drive moving. Two receivers each way. Jessen makes the catch, now steps out of bounds, so he'll only have a gain of four as some fisticuffs up front. I believe that looked like McFarland and Jadis. I kind of like the personnel that they have with, with Slay, the two tailbacks, Ellsworth and um, Carl Thomas. I think they have to go with more of that bigger personnel because if they try to spread out Lafayette's defense, I think that advantage goes to Lafayette. And Hoy is looking for that first conference win of the year. And flaked their losing streak as well as Johnson keeps and he'll have a first down and again takes a pop late as he was going to the ground, and we, we talked about it before. He's been a little banged up over the last few games, so you could tell early in the season, especially that Lehigh game, he was running guys over, a little more judicious about the hits he's trying to take. But again, you see the legs of Gunther and Johnson making a play. Yeah, and, and you can tell it, it, it affects the play calling as well because that's the first designed or any kind of option run game um, in terms of the read zone that, that Gunther Johnson's had. No fake, looking deep. Going for Darius, and it will be picked off. Try to give his guy a chance to make a play, but instead up to the challenge was Philip Parham. Parham played that football perfectly. That, that's his second interception. This is the guy that went up there, was able to pin the receiver to the sideline and find the football, turn around, find the football, and play it like a defensive uh, center fielder. Go up. Just great defensive. That's textbook right there. Textbook defensive play, but I tell you what, from an offensive perspective, I love the play call. It did not result in what they wanted. Obviously, you know, an interception was probably the worst thing you could have had on that play, but they took a shot downfield. They took a shot with their best guy one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback. Nine times, maybe eight times out of ten, he's going to win that play. He's going to win that jump ball. I love the play call. I love trying to stretch the field and try and make something happen, trying to get something to ignite this crowd and ignite that, that Georgetown, honestly, the whole team standing on the sideline just waiting for something to happen. And you have credit to Jadis, I believe, on that nice rush as well as this will be out in the flat and Palumbo will be taken out of bounds and a flag comes in late, so let's see what that is. But back to that play, you could tell that 
Johnson threw that one off his back foot as he had a man bearing down on him. Yeah, he tried to throw it as far as he could, but it went inside as opposed to outside. But we got a holding call here. Again, their defense has been where it needs to be to, to get the ball back to their offense. So if they can get one more defense to stop. Now, if you're Lafayette, this is a crucial drive. You really haven't done anything offensively in about two and a half quarters. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I honestly think since that first quarter, they've kind of gotten a little – um, laxed in, in what they're doing on offense. They haven't, we haven't seen what, um, you know, the multiple formations, the different shifting, getting the ball to different guys that we saw in that first quarter there, and it's showing. Sean O'Malley, the walk-on freshman quarterback out of Beverly Hills. Screen here to Emil. Jefferson makes a huge play. <laughs> Brian Jefferson sniffed it out and then made the play as well. I guess that celebration, that's the generational gap, because to me that looked like Street Fighter, but I, tell you I guess what. that's what, uh, uh, Pokemon? I, no, that was uh, some Kamehameha going on. <laughs> but I tell you what, good thing he didn't get flagged for that, because you see that a lot these days. Just a little bit of celebration, you get it, but <laughs> Jefferson getting away with a big play there and a fantastic celebration by the big guy up front. Wonder if the officials even knew what he was doing. <laughs> Lucky it was a little for, Dragon Ball Z. That's Lucky what it is. <laughs> Looking for him again. The Hoyas on the screen pass, and this time it is Tate bringing down Pearson as Lafayette trying to go to the well again. It doesn't work. I knew Mike was going to know what that was. I couldn't think of it right <laughs> off the bat, but you know I knew exactly what it was from from uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, the the guy, the uh, Goku. Goku. There oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the game. Good grief. But again, there's Tate with that pursuit. The, the reason why these two plays didn't work for Lafayette was they, were, they didn't allow the defense to go upfield. There were two screen plays, but he threw them quickly. Too quick. Too exactly. quick. You got to let that, you know, that's more of a, like a soft loft throw instead of a quick throw. They need to get it all the way out to the 30-yard line. About 17 needed. O'Malley flushed again. Paul gets the pressure, and it'll be incomplete as O'Malley goes down. As Duval Paul had the heat on him, and again, and now it looks like O'Malley talking to the official. I think he was looking for a horse collar there. Yeah, big Duval Paul getting in the backfield, just a freshman, 6'1", 260 pounds up front. This kid's been a beast all season long, and, and you see right there, just absolutely blew Colin Bradley into the quarterback and uh, didn't allow him anywhere to throw the football. And we see it again. Now they're going to get another short field, a great job by the Georgetown defense. Darius should have a chance to return this one. Big kick by Turk. Darius brought down on a great special teams play by Lafayette. Coming up, Jack Lamb, the linebacker, to pin the Hoyas back a bit. Thought they might have the ball at the 50. Turk and the special teams come through in spades. I mean, what can you say about you know Michael Turk here? He, he's had some unbelievable punts today. And right when we thought Georgetown was going to get the ball back at around the 50-yard line again, he kicks this one, an absolute boomer, down into the 30 area. And then Jake, uh, Jake Lamb, or Jack Lamb comes up and, and just comes and makes a fantastic tackle on Michael Darius. Had he not had that tackle, there was a lot of space behind him. So great job by that punt coverage unit. Talking to Rob Scarlotta yesterday, he said, look, team that wins the kicking game is probably going to win this game. Lafayette's been able to do it so far today, mostly because of Turk. Here goes Johnson trying to get to the sticks, gets out of bounds and avoids the hit. And he'll be right there just across for a first down. Now you're starting to see their offense find some rhythm in this fourth quarter. What you want to see them start to do is start to rip off these chunk plays. You know, yes, the, these little short runs and, and short quick passes are nice, but now you're under the clock. You're almost under nine minutes in this ballgame. You have to start getting 15, 10 yards, things like that, to move this football downfield. So again, a first and 10. Slay in as the H-back, handoff to Ellsworth, and he is swallowed up. And again, that's the big guy, Tony Jadis, the Syracuse transfer, bringing him down for a loss of three. Yeah, just doing a great job getting in the backfield, and it's been tough sledding all day for this Georgetown front, uh, front five here, trying to run the football. The, the Lafayette defense has done a great job at getting push by their front four which has allowed the linebackers to come up and fill those gaps, not allowing anywhere for the running backs to go with the football. And it's just been a great job. Textbook run-stopping defense today for the Lafayette, for the Lafayette uh, Leopards here. 
Jadis coming from Syracuse, as we mentioned before, as this time Johnson follows Ellsworth into the hole. He'll have a gain of about one. But he's an interesting story. I actually asked some of the Lafayette staff, you know, hey, did he end up there because it's somewhat local? It's really about two and a half hours away from his hometown in New Jersey, Lafayette is. And they said, no, he just he kind of liked the school and he thought, leaving Syracuse, I want to go somewhere where the education is going to be big. And obviously, Lafayette, that's a very good school. So he's found a home and they are glad to have him as he is a standout type player. We've seen him make some big plays from that defensive tackle spot today. Third and 11 need to get to the 41 of Lafayette for a first down, possible four down territory for the Hoyas. Johnson surveys, now he'll take up and run. He'll get close to the sticks, but the ball's out. Who gets on top of it? Looks like the Hoyas do. And they caught a break there. Darius was just in the right place at the <laughs> right time on that one. And first down yardage as well. And it's one of those things where, you know, Jeremy, you kind of mentioned it where Johnson's been banged up. And, and when you're banged up, you kind of, you worry more about getting down than protecting the football. And you saw it on that play. He was trying to get down. and didn't do a nice job of getting two hands on the ball. Ellsworth brought down in the backfield as penetration made him pick his way through. Mike and Emery, it was Hinchin on that last play, stripping that ball. Did a good job. Of course, had the pick earlier on. Yeah, one reason why they're not having success running downhill is that they haven't done anything all game to loosen up the interior of that defensive line. Normally you try to get outside, quick pass, or maybe run off tackle, then run downhill. They're just running downhill, and Lafayette is ready for it. Yet playing the run on their way to the passer. Johnson out to Darius, makes the grab. He's got 11 and a first down. And that's what you got to do against this, this Lafayette defense. You're seeing a lot of cover three, maybe a little cover one with some man coverage underneath. But you, in, those, in both of those coverage, you have the outside routes. You have those comebacks. You have those hooks. That you see it right here, a little cover three, soft shell by that corner, just a little out route. But those little outs, those little comebacks, that's what you need. Get your playmakers the football and get an easy 10 yards. Johnson looking deep, looking, and he will not find his target again. Another pick by a Lafayette defender. This time it's Eric Mitchell making the grab. They went for the freshman, Dijon Williams, couldn't find him. Again, he got hit as he threw that football, so that's probably why it tatered uh, toward the inside. But again, great position by the cornerback, and this is another defensive back in Eric Mitchell that finds the football. Turn around and play the ball, and once the ball is in the air, forget the receiver, go get the ball, and they've done that all game long. Yeah, I think that the most impressive thing about those last two interceptions is the way that they're playing the football. They're doing a phenomenal job at finding the wide receiver, and as soon as they see those those receivers' eyes go up in the air, they get their heads turned around. They're not playing the wide receiver anymore. Now they're going to find the football in that ball hawk mentality, and a great job by them. Pass out in the flat, completed, banged out of bounds, goes the H-back. Will Eisler, nice gain of about eight on the play. And as, and as good as those, you know, those defensive plays were, from a Georgetown perspective, you know, two good play calls. If you're Gunther Johnson, you have to put the ball outside. And I know we talked about him getting rushed and getting hit, but ultimately those are two balls that this game right now should be 14 to seven. Mm -hmm. Those were two plays that were, were open. If he puts the ball in the correct spot, he has the touchdowns. So the plays are, are there for the taking. They're just not able to execute at the level that they need to to get some points. Here's Simpson. He's going to have first down yardage as he will move the sticks for Lafayette. And we start to dip towards five minutes to go in this game. Georgetown's defense needs at least one more stop. I think they need a turnover to help their offensive out in a big time way. We saw this last year from a Georgetown football team where the defense was the one making the play and probably getting a score. So. This is where you need your Williamses to step up and, and make a play. And I know the ball is maybe not coming, is coming their way, but someone on defense has to step up and make a play to help out their offense. Third interception of the day for Gunther Johnson. Came into the game with none on the season. Here's Simpson, Kessler with a nice play there to bring him down for a minimal gain. Yeah, and on the, on the flip side of that, if you're, if you're the Leopard offense right now, you need to have that killer mentality in your head. You have four minutes and 45 seconds left on this clock. You bleed it out. You get any kind of points, this game's over. Any kind of points here, three, seven, doesn't matter. You get some points here, and this game is over. 
But this Georgetown defense we know is very, very tough. They're tough to run against. They're tough to throw against. So this is not going to be an easy next four, four and a half minutes to drive down and get some points. They're going to really have to earn it to win this football game. Second and eight. Man in motion, fake it to him. Now they'll go for the screen out in the flat. Emil will be hit and brought down and slammed backwards. Jelani Williamson with the first contact, then Christian Tate brings him back. And guys, pretty smartly, I would think, Tate didn't slam him on his head, put him back on himself and then to the ground. Yeah, that was a smart job because, you know, they were waiting to throw that football, I mean, throw that flag, but great eyes by Tate to chase that play down. And again, people forget, he was a former high school running back, so he has speed to accelerate down the sideline. Yeah, I mean, it shows you just the athleticism by that front four there and by Christian Tate getting out there on a swing pass and meeting him at the sideline before he's even able to turn up field. But you mentioned it, just a great job by Tate with the awareness of not slamming him. I saw him pick <laughs> his guy up, and I went, oh, boy, here's 15 yards. But a great job just picking him up and saying, all right, I'm just going to lay you on me. <laughs> Looking at the upcoming schedule in this one, the Hoya is good to Bucknell next week. And then they finish out here with Colgate. Could have a chance to play spoiler in that one. Be senior day for the Hoyas. Of course, Lafayette, they've got some big ones coming up if they get the win today. Huge one against Colgate next week. Then Lehigh, so Lafayette win today. Everything is still in their hands. Of course, Lafayette-Lehigh, the oldest rivalry in college football. Played the one, I believe, two years ago at Yankee Stadium, maybe three of the 150th playing. And those two teams, that's everything up there in the Lehigh Valley. That is going to be a strength versus strength game. Absolutely. Secondary versus that passing game. I can't wait to watch that one. So third and 14, Lafayette's played conservative really on these downs all game long. Let's see if they do it again. O'Malley over the middle, almost intercepted as Akiri had a better chance to get that one than the actual tight end did. So the Hoya defense stands up again. And, and for me, I will put Jelani Williamson back to return his punt. If it were me, that's the guy I would want with the ball in his hands because he's a, he's one that can t can flip this field position. I think, you know, even though they're going to put their guy back there and, and uh, Darius, I would put my best player with the ball in his hands back to return punt. Absolutely. Of course, Turk with some tricky kicks. Let's see why he kicks this one. Darius should have a shot to return this one as he gets it at his 20. Trying to get to the outside. Darius got a little bit of space. Comes forward. He'll get it out to the 40-yard line. So good job by the Hoya return team. Turk maybe outkicked his coverage a bit Absolutely. there, and the Hoyas yeah. have a chance. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Turk with almost too good of a kick. Almost a 60-yard kick in the air, which outkicks your coverage. You don't have enough guys down there at that point. It gives a lot of space for Darius. And Darius just doing what he does when the ball's in his hands, making plays, finding different lanes that he can get up into, and giving his offense decent field position here with just under four minutes to go in a one-score game. All right, Mike, got to put your offense coordinator hat on. What play you call you have here for? I'm going deep. <laughs> <laughs> Gunslinger, folks, gunslinger. <laughs> Quick pass out to Darius, snags it, trying to get to the outside, pushed out of bounds, well out of bounds, but they'll say they let contact go right as he crossed the line. Yeah, in all honesty, though, I, if you're the, the Georgetown offensive coaching staff right now, you have to be very careful about what you call. Right. Because the last two deep balls that you've thrown trying to, to expand the field and, and go down the field there have been picked off. So it's a, it's a tricky situation that you're in because you can't be too conservative, but you also don't want to put your, your offense in bad shape. Croson back there playing center field. Thomas kind of walking up. Here's the option. Johnson will keep. Gets a gain of three, about three yards short of the sticks as we're 315 and rolling. You know what's probably one of the more underrated play calls in any situation? The middle screen to the tight end. I think in this situation, I would probably break that open here against a defense that's flying to the corners, flying upfield, and leaving the middle of the field wide open for Georgetown. Yeah, I think any kind of middle screen against when you have an offense like this that's struggling to really do much and get down the field, and you have a defense that's pinning their ears back, any kind of middle screen is money against that. Need to get to the 50 for a first down. Here they go over the middle, and making the catch is Williams. He's going to be brought down across the 35-yard line. Again, Max Edwards on the grab as he takes it inside the 35 down to the 33. I believe Hoyers are going to actually going to be an injury timeout for Lafayette as a player is down for the Leopards. 
Now, it wasn't a middle screen, but we knew that middle of the field was wide open in that situation. So exactly. they went right to it. That's just a great job uh, by the offensive staff of Georgetown. And it's a really nice job there by Gunther Johnson. He felt pressure in his face, so he almost took a little half step back on his back foot, knowing he's got the strength. You can see it here. Almost takes that little lean back, give himself a little bit of space, and guns it in there. Beautiful throw. Good catch there by the freshman, getting that first down. And honestly, that was the first time all day, guys, that we've seen this crowd kind of get some excitement going. And that's what this team needs. Get this crowd into a little bit. You got two and a half minutes left in this game. If this crowd can get into it and they can get seven points here, watch out for the end of the game or possibly overtime because now that momentum is totally shifted over. Eric Mitchell was the player down and actually was down away from the play. So good to see him get up. For the latest Patriot League news and information, follow the official Patriot League account on Twitter at Patriot League. So, Hoy is in business. Need a touchdown, an extra point to tie this one up. Still a ways to go, but boys have two of their timeouts. Shouldn't really need those, at least where they are. Thomas, you learn back in the backfield, two receivers each way for Gunther Johnson. Johnson out in the flat. Darius again looking upfield before he makes the catch and can't bring it in. And that's just a case of trying to do too much, you know, it, it, too quickly. And there's still a lot of time left in this football game, two and a half minutes to get one touchdown. That's all you need. You know, just catch the football, secure the ball, give yourself four or five yards, and you keep yourself on pace with the chains. Now you put yourself at second and 10 here and you're behind the sticks. Just need to catch that football, secure it right away and get yourself to four or five yards. These running backs have done a great job in blitz pickup too. They've cut block a Absolutely. lot of these blitz and backers on the last couple of plays. Second and 10 now, pressure comes. Johnson tries to get out of it. He'll be brought down for a loss of one as again, Lafayette, the pressure gets home. Yeah, that was a play call that I think they they needed to try and get out of that one because it looked like almost a max protection, two-man route, Darius going deep. They did a little play fake there, but it was it was a cover two or possible cover four where you had a safety on his side of the field, basically double-teaming Darius. You see it here. They roll into that that almost a, that two shell, that two safety shell, two men on Darius. There's nothing he can do there. Nowhere to throw the football, nowhere to go with the football because it's a max protection play. And then you end up with yourself a third and 11 behind the chains again. Not a spot that you want this offense to be in. And now you take that time out. So it's you can't punt the football here. So you probably want to get half of this and then get the other half on fourth down, make it easier for you. But this is a big play. This may be the most critical play of the game if they don't obviously go for it on fourth. Yeah, at this point, using that second time out really no option besides getting the first down. Yeah, and it shows you that Coach Scarlato's going for it here. This, this is it, this is the game. This drive is 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 gonna win or lose the game here, and that's that's Coach Scarlato's thinking. When you look at the players in the situation, these are the players you trust to make plays. Schley is out there as a H-back. Vallis, we haven't seen that much of in the second half, is out there in the backfield. Darius. Edwards out as well. Option here. Johnson pitches it to Vallis, and he's going to be brought down for a two-yard loss on the play. And Georgetown is going to take another timeout. That's when you wanted to see Johnson tuck up and run because, again, I'm not a big fan of short side option. You limit the, the field for the back to make something happen. Plus, Johnson waited too long to make that commitment. You want to attack downhill, as you see right here on the replay. They're running toward it, attack, and then commit up to where that defensive lineman, you made his job easier by staying parallel to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they took it too far out, and honestly, I feel like that's one of those plays that they've gone to just too many times today. This Lafayette defense knows what they're doing. They know exactly when that play is coming, and it's it's a little bit of a conservative play call for me on third and 11. You need to get yourself at least five or six yards. I'm not sure a, a long, stretched-out play like the option is 
is the right play on, on that third down call. Now you give yourself a fourth and almost 15 situation. This has got to be the best play in your playbook right now. And this is for the ball game. They do not get this play. They don't have enough time. They have no timeouts left, and they can't stop the clock. So this has got to be the best play in your playbook. What do you feel the most comfortable with to get 15 yards? If it were me, it would be that inside receiver running that, that dig route, the outside receiver running the post, and you flare that back down the rail, down the sideline with that wheel route. And it gives you a lot of options when you do that. Looks like a little personnel change, guys, out there at the deep safety for Lafayette. It's Tymere Jones. Usually seeing Crossan back there. He's playing more up on the line of scrimmage. Now Crossan trying to drop back, and Johnson will check. And in motion is McLaughlin. Looking for Darius, who makes the catch. A flag goes down as he had crossed the line of scrimmage anyway. Let's see, that's a lot to sort out, folks. Lafayette shaking their heads. Going to call an illegal chop block. And just saw it there. It looked like Thomas coming through to make the block. And as he did, Stuart Keener got a hand on him. And that's where the illegal chop block comes from. Let's look at it again, guys. You see it on the edge there, running back going low to pick up the blitz. And, and the rule in college football, and I believe it's the same in the pros, is when one person goes down on a defender to try and block him, you cannot have anybody else in the vicinity try and touch him. As soon as two people touch him and one person is going low, it's an automatic penalty. You, it just, it's, a safety, it's a safety issue when somebody's diving at the legs of a, a defensive lineman or a blitzing linebacker. They have to be able to protect those guys. So I think they're going to say that Darius had the first down, so then Lafayette had to take the penalty. Is that a 20-yard penalty? Uh, 15, I believe. Yeah, 15. Yeah. They were behind the sticks. Uh, yeah, 15 yards. So balls at the 49-yard line of Georgetown. They need to take it down to the Lafayette 23 for a first down. Let's see what the Hoyas come up with. Johnson fakes, gives himself some time. He's got to heave it down the field. Looking for Edwards, who does he make the catch? They're going to say he doesn't bring it in. Would have had the first down, but they say that Edwards couldn't corral it. And that'll likely do it for the Hoyas. It was close. We, we got blocked off there at the end with some players in front, but it will be interesting to see this replay here, see if he came down with it. A great job by Johnson just creating time, trying to find a guy down the field. Edwards followed him across, and we'll see if he catches it on this play here. Oh. Didn't look like it. Uh, it and, must, and the ball came out. Yeah. yeah. Good effort, good play by Johnson, but, you know, ultimately uh, – Turnover on downs there for the Georgetown offense, just you know, hurting themselves on that drive. You know, that big 15-yard penalty with the chop block after they had the first down. You have plays like that late in the game; they're going to cost you. How about credit to those Lafayette defense pitching the shutout? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, two big crucial interceptions <laughs> really saved the day for them. Absolutely, I and mean, they've played a fantastic ga game today. Great scheme coming in, great game plan coming against this Georgetown offense, and they have executed it almost to perfection, trying to, to stop any kind of weapons that Georgetown may have to get loose. So two more knees. Get this very close to being over if it doesn't end it. As quarterback O'Malley under center. I'll take a knee again. And of course, Georgetown with no timeouts, having to use them on the last drive. And that will, one more knee will do it as Lafayette stays in the Patriot League race with a hard fought win here in D.C. As you guys mentioned, some big defensive plays to keep Georgetown off the scoreboard. And as much credit as you have to give this Lafayette defense, you have to give almost equal amount of credit to the Georgetown defense. Oh. They played their butts off today. 
absolutely you know bending but not breaking when they needed to getting their offense good field position when they needed it and and really keeping them in this game this entire ball game so a great great effort by the georgetown defense just unfortunately wasn't able to get the support by their offense that they needed to win this football game defense and special teams were, were on point today for both squads the reason why we saw a really good contested defensive slugfest today Credit to Luke Thompson, the guy that used to coach Georgetown and the one that currently coaches the, the unit for Lafayette. Both his teams doing pretty well today on the defensive side of the ball. That'll do it here for regulation as it's over. Lafayette with a 7-0 win over Georgetown here on homecoming on the hilltop. We'll have our postgame coverage coming up right after this. You're watching Patriot League Network on Stadium. you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan, you want the world to know it. And there's only one place for you to gear up, shop.guhoyas.com. You'll find an awesome selection of Georgetown items, including jerseys, t-shirts, hats, and more. Decorate your home, office, or even your car with the best selection of Hoyas gear anywhere. You'll also find great customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and fast shipping. So show the world you're a Georgetown Hoyas fan. Head to shop.guhoyas.com. Welcome back to our nation's capital as Lafayette beats Georgetown 7 to nothing in this homecoming day here on the Hilltop. Lafayette again moving up to 3 and 6 on the year, but the more important number for the Leopards, 3 and 1 in Patriot League play. They are very alive when it comes to a chance to go ahead and get a Patriot League championship. Jeremy Huber, Michael Niebrick, and Emery Hunt. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our second half highlights in this contest. And again, guys, you see. These uh, teams, really a hard-fought battle. Lafayette scored their touchdown in the first half. Both teams kind of going back and forth. This is where it seemed to be Georgetown's best shot, the legs of Gunther Johnson. Exactly, and the legs of Gunther Johnson, he had a couple of good plays today running the football, whether it was in the pass game or in that designed read option game. Um, he just didn't have enough plays, and I think it has something to do with him getting banged up. Um, you know, he, he's not the runner that we saw earlier on in the season, but he has that ability out there to make some big plays for this offense. But then you would see something that he hasn't done in his starts this year. The turnover ends up with four interceptions, I believe, all in the second half for Gunther Johnson. That was the first one as that was uh, bringing that one in, the linebacker for uh, Lafayette that time. Uh, Rob Hinchin, and then we would see another one here as they would go deep and Parra makes the big play, Emery. Yeah, those secondary players for Lafayette did a great job of playing the ball once it's in the air. It's a pet peeve of mine, but these guys definitely came to play and help bail them out of bad situations. And then we would see the Georgetown defense really step up with some big plays, Mike. Well, they stepped up and played well all day long. I mean, they were phenomenal today. And you see Big Jefferson there going with the, the Goku celebration, but they were phenomenal all afternoon, and, and they kept this team in it. Had they had one turnover, they probably would have won the football game, and they did absolutely everything that they could to give their team a chance to win. But you'd see that big defensive line for Lafayette of course, that time going ahead and making the big play, Jadis, who was really all over the field for Lafayette in the backfield of the Hoyas. Here was a fumble, but Johnny on the spot, Michael Darius kept the possession alive for the Hoyas being there on the play. Again, Georgetown would keep things going, finding Darius, finding Darius, as they would try and keep things going, try to get that touchdown, but again, they would go deep, and again, they would come up bust. Finding the football is what I want cornerback to do. Give me the cornerback that can make the play on the ball and come away with the turnover. They did just that. That was Mitchell on that pick. So still would stay at 7 nothing. and again, the Hoyas making some big plays. This was the one by Christian Tate. Comes over a little bit of a slam right there. No 15-yard penalties. He kind of put him down as easily as you can when you put a guy over your head. Boys would get a chance as Darius on the punt return would get them in decent field position. 
And again, Hoyas would have their shots. This time a good play by Max Edwards had things going. They're down deep, getting a chance here. And again, it would be the turnover bug. Actually, this would be the completion to Darius that I believe came back on penalty. As you would see, the Hoyas go back again, trying for something. This would be late to last chance. Fourth and long, Edwards deep. Had a chance to bring the catch in, couldn't do it. Good play by the Lafayette secondary to knock that one loose because he couldn't bring it in, and that would bring an end to the game. Guys, quickly on the stats, Hoyas, again, neither team really doing a huge job offensively, and even the third downs, not that much. But again, I think tonight, Emory, you mentioned it, it was turnovers that were the key. Turnovers killed him in the second half, but you look at a combined 116 plays total, but only maybe 300-something yards of offense total. So not a good offensive day for either squad, but great defensive squads. Uh, play for, for both dis, uh, defensive squads. Yeah, I mean, ultimately in a game like this, when you have two almost evenly matched teams, and we saw that coming in with the stats, and, and we see that here as well, almost two evenly matched teams, usually what happens in deciding a game is turnovers. And Lafayette was able to come up with four interceptions on Gunther Johnson today, and that ultimately is what won them the football game. So that'll do it from our nation's capital. Lafayette with a 7-0 win over Georgetown. Leopards, again, set up to have a shot at that Patriot League title, still with Colgate and Lehigh on the schedule. They went out, they'll be your champs. Hoyas, two more chances to get a conference win. Bucknell next week, Colgate the week after that. Emery, Mike, and I will be back for that one in two weeks. Again, your final score from Cooper Field. Lafayette, a winner over Georgetown, 7-0. You've been watching this one on the Patriot League Network on Stadium. Good afternoon, everybody.